Test, test, one, two, three, test, one, two, three.
tonight, senior night. We'd like to take a moment to recognize our seniors in the football program, the cheerleaders, and the band program. Starting off, Isaac Seydoux, escorted by mom, Donna Mae Seydoux, best friend Sydney, Raleigh, and best friend Najee. Sorry about that. Isaac Asadu, escorted by Mom, Donna May, Asadu, best friend Sydney Raleigh, and best friend Naji. escorted by his guardian angel's father, Terrence Bar Barber, mother, Jana Smith, stepmother, Brittany Wade, his brothers, Denim Cook, Namir Frazier, and sister, Josiah Frazier, his grandparents, Salome, and Arthur Smith, Ajay, Barber, and his Annie Marquette. Birchfield, escorted by Father Brad Birchfield, Mother Christy Birchfield, and Sister Brooke Birchfield.
Deontay Hubbard, escorted by stepdad Robert Beck, mom Novita Hubbard Beck, and brother Dale Hubbard III. escorted by dad Wally Jackson, mom Terry Jackson, and brothers Cody Jackson, class of 09, and Allie Kane, Evan Jackson, class of 11, and Emily Jackson, Cole Jackson, class of 19, and nephews Dean and Lee. escorted by Father Carrie Leonard, his mother Allison Leonard, and his sister Amelia Leonard.
Tate Underwood, escorted by Father Woody, Mother Andrea, Brother Austin, and Sister-in-law Taylor. Nieces Josephine and Oakland and the Lannings. Michael Young will be escorted by his parents, Michael and Kelly Young. Starting off our cheerleaders, Jamie Bonner is escorted by her mom, Marla Bonner, her dad, Henry Bonner, her sister, Journey Bonner, and her grandmother, Lee Anderson. She attended Berwick Alternative as a member of the Worley House. Jamie has been on the cheer team since her freshman year, has cheered eight seasons, and was a member of the 2021 competition, which placed third in the state. Jamie will cheer her ninth season this winter. Joy Brown is escorted by her mother and stepfather Kelly and Anthony Miller, father Jeff Brown, and sister and coach Kristen Brown, class of 2015, her other siblings J.R. Brittany and her boyfriend Nick Harris. Joy attended CSG for elementary and middle school and is a member of the Springs House. She has been on the cheer team since her freshman year, cheered eight season, and was a member of the 2021 competition team which placed third in the state. Joy will cheer her ninth season this winter. Madison Griffin is escorted by her mom, Stephanie Smith, her dad, Lamonte Griffin, and her little sis, Chloe. She attended Grace Christian School as a member of the Sacred Heart House. Madison has been on the cheer team since her freshman year, has cheered five seasons, was a member of the 2021 competition, which placed third in the state. Reagan King is escorted by her mom, Shauna, her stepdad, Mark, her brother, Aiden, and her sister, Ryla. She attended St. Pius, a member of the Sacred House. Reagan has been on the cheer team since her freshman year, has cheered eight seasons, and was a member of the 2021 competition team, which placed third in the state. She would cheer her ninth season this winter.
Grace Powell is escorted by her parents, Jeff Powell, class of 93. Jen Powell and her sister, Emma Powell, class of 2021. Her grandparents, Jim and Maureen Powell, class of 1967. Bo and Steve Clark, she attended St. Matthew and is a member of the Worley House. Grace has been on the cheer team since her freshman year. This cheer eight season and was a member of the 2021 competition team, which placed third in the state. She would cheer her ninth season this winter. St. Mary's and is a member of the Worley House. Kyra has cheered six seasons and will 
be cheering her seventh season this winter. Raina Rote Kirchen leads off our band. She is escorted by her mother, Janet, and her father, Kurt. She has been eight, in the band eight years. She attended St. Pius and is a member of Aquinas House. Sarah Smith is escorted by her mother, Dr. Carlina Griffiths, and her sister, Camara. She's been in band five years, attended St. Mary's, and is a member of Sacred Heart. Anthony Stewart is escorted by his mother Latoya White, stepfather Nicholas White, sister Cadence, and father Antonio Rutledge. He's been in band five years, went to Patriot Preparatory Academy, and is a member of Aquinas House. Devonie Skelton Hayes is escorted by Mother Trina, Brother Darius, Sister Ariel, and uncles, Papa, cousins, and Godmother. This is her first year. She's a member of the founding Bishop Hart of the Color Guard. Her grade school was Patriot Preparatory Academy, and she's a member of the Springs House. Janara Hampton is escorted by her friends Devonie Skelton Hayes, Allison Parma, and Randall Kerr. This is the first year. She's a founding member of the Bishop Hartley Color Guard, attended St. Matthews, and is a member of Sacred Heart. Lisa Atkins is escorted by her mom, Miss Xavier Atkins. This is her first year. She's a founding member of the Bishop Hartley Color Guard. She attended Patriot Preparatory and is a member of Rosary House.
Ask your blessings on the officials and everyone in the Bishop Watterson and the Bishop Hartley communities. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be part of this friendly competition. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you remain standing, Star Spangled Banner will be played by the Hartley Band under the direction of Mr. David Giesler. Hawk Nation, on your feet, please welcome to the field your 2022 Bishop Hartley. Welcome to Jack Ryan Field here at Bishop Hartley High School where tonight it is a big CCL matchup. In fact, it's a matchup for a share of the CCL title between the Bishop Hartley Hawks and the Bishop Watterson Eagles. I'm Bob McElligot along with Randall Sampson tonight. Randall, these games always mean the most to these schools, these league games. And again, it's all on the line here tonight. Bishop Watterson, they win. They win the title outright. Bishop Hartley wins. It's going to be a shared title again this year. Well, it's one of those where, you know, at the end of the season, you can't even paint a better picture than this, right? Uh, so throw all the records out the window, titles on the line, crisp fall evening, and it's not really super cold, so it's just great football weather, and we'll see what happens. See the records there, 8-1 and one for Bishop Watterson. The Hartley Hawks are 4-5. and five. Both teams have already qualified for the playoffs. Let's take a look at the, uh, the key players in this one, the players to watch, and there are plenty of them in this game between these two teams. Uh, really, for Bishop Watterson, it's one guy that does it all, Ryan Radzinski. Hey, he, he is a hawk. That's all he is. He, he gets after it. He's a pure baller, and you really have to try to contain him the best you can. And when you contain him, he slings it really well. So you're, you're looking at a triple threat. Absolutely. He's a, he is the do-it-all guy for them. Now, for Bishop Hartley, uh, they have a trio of guys that seem to do it all. And I'm talking about their running backs. And the guys in the backfield that will touch the ball a lot tonight are the guys that they're expecting to get the job done. Yeah, so you got you got a three of guys that, that come at you with three headed monster. But the key to this is it's gotta be a team effort. Dante Hubbard is back in this game, by the way. The senior, he's their lead running back. He's been out the last couple of weeks, so it'll be great to have him back tonight. Yeah, he went out a little dinged up last week uh, on one play. He, he couldn't put pressure on his foot, so we'll see what happens. Here we go. Yes, and the kickoff 
bouncing and rolling all the way back to the 10 yard line and that one is bobbled by Radzinski he picks it up and there he goes up the far sideline breaking tackles across the 30 to 35 the 40 yard line they're trying to chase him down in Hartley territory and he finally is going to be run out of bounds but not until he is inside the 30 yard line down almost to the 20 yard line would a return for Bishop Watterson on a kick that looked like it was going to be tough to handle yeah, and that's the athletic ability that we're talking about. That's the threat. So not only is this kid a great uh, asset on the field for offense, but he does special teams, kick returns, all the other stuff that happens. Uh, so this is uh, the threat that Hartley really has to fight against on a short field now. Tell you what, before we get going here, we have a third member of our broadcast crew tonight, and that's Will Ward, who is down on the sidelines. He's got the front row seat down there. And uh, Will, how was it down there on the sidelines on this beautiful fall evening? Now we're having some technical difficulties there, so we'll get right to the play. Ryan Radzinski is the quarterback, and he sets up in the shotgun formation for Watterson. They send triple receivers out to the right side, the wide side of the field. Now they move a man in motion. That's Brandon Trout. He's their lead receiver. Radzinski steps back, looking in Trout's direction, wants to throw, puts it in the air, and has to throw it away. Some late pressure coming from the Hawks, and that's what forced that throw out of bounds. And that's what this quarterback does so well. Uh, he set up in the pocket, then he shifted a little bit away from the pressure uh, without panicking and buying time with his feet, without taking off, just uh, sliding around. And that defense just has to keep chasing him, keep making him uncomfortable. Brandon Lorette coming up there with that late pressure. And uh, no, it's a good job. It, you know the guys in the secondary were getting the job done, and they finally made Rodzinski wait long enough for one of the linemen to get up there and apply the pressure. Second down and 10. Little pistol formation this time. And they're going to pitch the ball on the right side, trying to turn the corner and getting to the 15-yard line before getting hit and being brought down is Trayton Mercer, the junior running back. And he's got some decent yardage. It'll leave a third down and short for Watterson. Yeah, it was just a good timing by Watterson. They ran the ball over to the right-hand side. Uh, Hartley was blitzing from the other side. So they ran away from the blitz by, uh, by Luck. And I think that was just a good call on their end, pick up a good nine. Mercer just to the left of the quarterback, Radzinski. He's got two running backs there. Now the backs will get on either side of the quarterback. Radzinski hands it off, and Mercer trying to cut back to the inside, and he is upended as he lunges forward to try to get the first down, and a, a good job there making the tackle. Blake Wyatt. Yeah, and I, and I, and I love the way that Barrett just came in. Number 86 uh, really closed down hard and tripped up the running back there. So we're going to see a lot of action from that young man tonight. I think that's where the weakness is going to be, and he's going to have to exploit it and show up tonight. So we'll keep an eye on that. First down and 10. Ball sitting at about the 12-yard line. Brzezinski on the snap. Mercer takes it. No room over that left side. Getting in there, Isaac Casado immediately makes contact, and he makes the tackle. Yeah, big Isaac did a good job stepping up in the hole, so he, uh, he really attacked his guy and then shut his block and was able to wrap up that running back. So I think that's the, that's the key right there is that front four has to show up tonight uh, to slow down that run game and then put pressure on the quarterback to make him feel uncomfortable back there. You're not going to stop that quarterback. <laughs> You're just going to have to hope to make him feel uncomfortable. Enough pressure uh, to where he's just uh, off by a touch. Second down play coming up here. Going out wide to the left side is Brandon Trout. They kind of spread the field a little bit uh, with the two receivers. And I want to see down here at the bottom of the screen, number 86, uh, Brandon. See what he does if he comes off the corner. Brzezinski hands it off. Mercer dancing his way up the middle. He's going to get a couple of yards before he is brought down. And that's exactly what you were talking about as uh, Brandon Lorette makes the tackle. Yeah, he did a good job. He got our field to create that pressure and then came right back up underneath. He spun out of it, came right back underneath to make the tackle on the, on the running back. So this kid's going to have a heck of a game tonight if he keeps that effort. And I think that's where the bubble is. That's where the weakness is. Big play right here. It's third down and eight. If you can force a play right here, maybe you get them to kick the field goal, make the field goal attempt instead of going forward on fourth down. This is a huge play. Radzinski in the shotgun. Watch the rub at the top. And Radzinski wants to run. And now he's pulling up, and he's down before he can pass the football. Great pressure right there. Donovan Davis, the 6'1", 285-pound junior, gets up there to get the pressure and force the tackle. 
And that's the junkyard dog just staying with his pursuit, staying in lane, and uh, going inside out, attacking that quarterback and make him feel uncomfortable to where he says, I don't want any part of that. I'll, I'll lick my wounds and keep it up for the next play. So the field goal attempt coming for Watterson. Rudy Kessinger is going to kick it from the 20-yard line. It's going to make it a 37-yard attempt as he puts it up, and that is good. So Watterson is on the board as they lead 3 to nothing. But, Randall, let's be honest about it. You have that huge kick return to get down to almost the Hartley 20-yard line, and you have to come away with only three points and not seven. Yeah, that's right. So they, they did exactly what the defense's is, is, uh, the defensive plan was. Uh, so they had the trips to the top, try to run that rub route, and everybody locked up their receivers so they weren't open. So the next thing you know, the quarterback is a great athlete. He's going to scramble. He already got you 80 yards on the kick return. So he's going to scramble, and then you had your defensive linemen stay true to who they are, pursuit, stay in your lane, and get your angles and get the sack. If it wasn't for that sack, I really think it would have been four-down territory for him. Yeah, I agree with you. And all of a sudden it goes from a... Uh, third down and eight to a fourth down and 12, and it changes the entire complexion of the thing. So the defense stands strong. And now Kessinger ready to kick the ball off to the Hartley Hawks. They're looking for a good return in their own right here. Yeah, and the ability just to give up three points on an 80-yard return, I think that's a, that's a win for the defense, and now it's uh, now the offense just needs to see what they can do and get, get on tempo. Kessinger. Approaching the football, and Hartley will get the ball after the bounce. Picked up at the 10-yard line. Coming across the field and unable to break a tackle at the 15-yard line. Returning that football, Fidela Samoja. And it's going to be a, a long field for the Hartley Hawks, but here comes their senior quarterback, Peyton Underwood. Six foot three, 205 pounds. And this is the last home game that he's playing here as a Bishop Hartley Hawk, so a lot of importance on this. Yeah, and those, those last home games are always important, especially uh, uh, for kids who've been in the program a while like he has. And so tonight's going to be his night, so I'm, I'm hoping to see him sling it a little bit and get that running game uh, going because once you start slinging it, it opens up some holes for the running backs. Uh, so we'll see what they do uh, coming out here in this set. Deontay Hubbard lined up in the backfield. He's lined up deep in the backfield. And they're going to pitch it. The man coming around the end, and not a lot there. In fact, it looks like they just get back to the line of scrimmage with that tackle. And carrying the football, Bryson Winbush, sophomore. They'll give him one. It'll be second down and nine. And that's the quintessential Hartley play. Uh, let's run the pitch into the boundary and uh, see if we can sort everything out. But I think Watterson was ready for him that time. Underwood drops back into the shotgun. With Hubbard lined up to his right, and we get a whistle and a flag. Defense was lined up offside. That's a free five yards given by Bishop Watterson. Makes this a much more manageable second down. Second down and four now. And I want to keep an eye on Ian Jackson, number 53, up there in the middle. Deontay Hubbard, they fake to him. They throw it out to the right side. And turning the corner, getting the first down and getting all the way out to close to the 35-yard line. Once again, Bryson Winbush with a reception and a nice run after the catch for the first down. And that's what the running game does. It makes you respect it on a fake and then just get your speed out in space. And he has to be one of the fastest kids on the team out there, at least in football pads that I've seen. And he really gets after it. Uh, last week he had a couple really long rips down the sideline and a couple touchdowns. So I'm willing to see him open it up a little bit more with this kid in space. They have yet to go to Deontay Hubbard in this game. And they will, and I'm sure they will a lot. And here's his first carry. Trying to go over the right side, and he does. And he breaks free. He's got the first down, and he's all the way across midfield and into Watterson territory. And that is where he is brought down. The tackle made by Ryan Radzinski. Yeah, from what I heard this week, uh, you know, the kid was banged up again last week, had uh, no pressure on that foot, couldn't, couldn't uh, walk on it, come off the field, and tried it again to get back in, didn't work. But from what I heard, the kids, you know, all said he's, he's ready to go. He just said, Coach, tape me up. I can't miss this game. I am ready. Ice me up, tape me up. Let's go through the therapy, and, and let's get it on. And that's exactly what these games are about. We talked about the rivalry games in the CCL, and this one is the biggest one. It's the last one of the year. And it is for Hartley for a share of the title. And here goes Deontay Hubbard again, tries the right side. This time, not going to find as much. He knifes forward maybe for one. 
Yeah, and that's what you got to do. It's just body blows, body blows, just, you know, a couple punches here, a couple punches there, and then you rip one. So you got to just uh, play the chess game and keep them honest. And they've got to do a better job. I, I see number 65 for Watterson, uh, defensive end. He came ripping down the line, and he's been on the last couple tackles, so he looks like he's out there uh, just as fired up as the other side. And that is Luke Reidlinger. He's a six foot one, 220 pound senior. Here's a handoff and coming around the near side, a little stutter step there and being caught right at about the 45 yard line and brought down. That was Terry and Barber. And again, we talked about this leading into the game. Ryan Rudzinski comes up from that safety position and he makes the tackle. The average high school kid would have missed that tackle, but this is Superman that you're dealing with. You got to bring a little bit more because this kid is all over and he made a sure tackle. Uh, if he doesn't make that tackle, that kid is in the end zone on a 48-yard touchdown run. Sent a couple of receivers out to the right side. Eye formation behind Underwood, who's under center here. And they hand it to the up man. And there is not much room there for the Hartley Hawks. Tried a quick hitter there with Rory Ralston. Yeah, Watterson's doing a good job shedding their blocks up front. And uh, the key to it is that at the end of the game, or at the end of the play, when you see offensive linemen standing around watching the running back being tackled, they've been shedded. So the next thing you got to do is you got to stay on your blocks if you're Hartley. Hartley going to go for it here at the 44 yard line of Bishop Watterson. Fourth down and five. Fake the handoff, throw to the near side, and Watterson had that sniffed out. And that was quickly blown up. Bryson Winbush. He made the reception, but Charlie Bernardus stepped up and made the tackle, and it's a turnover on downs. Yeah, that's a big play right there. So you got to have your receivers out on the outside on that smoke screen. They have to block and sustain their blocks. Uh, and just give you guy about two yards of, of running room, and he would have got that first down. But you have to maintain your block. So that's a big turnover. And when we talk about turnover, that's also field position. Yes, indeed it is. You got a great quarterback there like that, an athlete back there, and now you're looking at a – uh, you know, for an athlete like that, that's a short field. You got to pin him all the way back to the 10 and say, go 90 on us. Well, Rodzinski now shifts to the wide receiver position. And A.J. Makinich is the quarterback. Makinich, a junior. He stands back there and he throws. Looking for Rodzinski down the middle of the field, and that is almost picked off, but there is a flag. There was contact between Rodzinski and Emoja, and it looks like it's going to be a pass interference call. Yeah, so Emoja was tracking the ball, did a good job looking back, tracking the ball, being an athlete. And I think what happened is he pushed on the back. Uh, when, he go, when you're going up to catch, he pushed him on the back a little bit uh, and went up for the ball at, the, at its highest point. So that is, uh, that's a big play for Watterson. They're going to get the first down. Ball is marched all the way into Bishop Hartley territory. It'll be placed at the 42-yard line. And for Hartley's defense, this shouldn't be that complicated. Find number eight, he's getting the ball at all times. McInnish lines up in the receiver position now, wide out to the right. Rodzinski is back as the quarterback. And there are two other receivers split out to the left, the top of the screen. Shift a man into the backfield here and hand it off to him. Trying to go right up the middle and not having any success. Dominic Purcell. Purcell is fantastic on defense. He's a linebacker that really controls the field for Watterson defensively. They give him the football that time to see what he could do, and Hartley had that one sniffed out. Yeah, the Hartley's defensive end uh, came all the way from the other side of the field and just hammered down and knifed through some of the guys over there to make that uh, tackle from behind. So, uh, good job on the other side. Uh, number 86, once again, is, is the kid that we're looking at to see how he's going to stand up against this, uh, against this offensive line. Watterson again, three receivers set. Bring Purcell into the backfield. Fake the handoff to him. Rodzinski wants to run it. Over the left side he goes, and he is tripped up inside the 40 at about the 38-yard line. Good job on the tackle there by Bishop Hartley. And it looked like the guy holding on was Denham Cook, who is the sophomore. 
Yeah, big Denim. I mean, he's, a, he's a big kid for a sophomore. I mean, you're 6'3", 210, 215 or so. And it uh, seems like every, every week that goes by, he's gaining five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up from that linebacker position to make that tackle. Third down. McInich is the quarterback once again. Trout coming in motion. McInich with the throw and off the fingertips of the intended receiver coming out of the backfield, Trade Mercer. And it'll be fourth down, and it looks as though the Eagles are going to punt. Yeah, and, and Denham coming off that corner, um, blitzing off that edge, being 6'4 like that, and you, he got every last little inch of that plus that vertical. He's a... He's a, a multi-sport athlete, plays basketball, so that vertical really helped out that time because you have to throw over that and hope you're throwing it in the right place. Brzezinski is going to do the punting here. Job he picked up just a couple of weeks ago, as a matter of fact, after having never done it before. And this is a good kick, and it will bounce into the end zone for the touchback. Well, that's the key. You want Jim Thorpe to, <laughs> to touch the ball at all times, right? He is Watterson's Jim Thorpe. Yeah, he is, and... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Brian Kennedy, the head coach for the Eagles of Bishop Watterson, said, look, I need to do something, and he's my best athlete, so he's going to go back there and do the job. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then, you know, that, that third down was, was critical for Hartley, uh, stopping him because he had about 35 yards uh, to go straight up the middle. But Hartley's defense did exactly what they had to do. They played their keys. Big number 86 crashed down to force him to bounce outside where the defense was. So that's good play by Hartley, and let's see what they can do on, def on offense. Underwood. Ready to go back to work here. Takes the ball and hands it off on a delay. And a trying to dance his way up the middle with not much success there is Joey Wooten. He was grabbed and actually just pulled straight back after what looks to be a two-yard gain. Yeah, big old 76. That's a big man. Uh, so when he grabbed Joey, and Joey's 6'1", uh, 210 pounds himself. So he's a powerful kid, and he grabbed him and threw him down like a rag doll. That's Cole Rett. Who made that tackle and you'll probably hear his name a lot tonight Deontay Hubbard trying to get to the outside and turn the corner and Hubbard does for a couple of yards Brandon Trout runs about a bounce on the far sideline and that's the key that we were talking about earlier those uh, wide receivers staying engaged with their blocking on the outside and when you stay engaged with your blocking that causes them to pick up another five yards so uh, just staying engaged and, and being on your man and not standing around watching I think that's the key well, this is an important third down here because Sometimes you're in four-down territory. I don't know if that's the case right here. you got to get this first down. That would that'd be quite the gamble if you uh, – well, it depends. We'll see. Well, I told Coach before the game, it's fun to gamble with somebody else's chip, so we'll see what they do. <laughs> Good advice. Underwood throws near sideline, and this one is caught, and that's going to be enough for the first down. And trying to get more was uh, Bryson Winbush, but – he gets pushed back, but as I said, he got the job done. He gets out across the 30-yard line. So Underwood, a couple of passes tonight, Randall, and, and nothing deep, but just these little passes like this one, and it's all about completing it and getting first downs. Well, and that's, that's, a, that's a senior quarterback. If you notice the pass, he hits the, court, he hits the wide receiver on his right arm, the inside arm, right? So that slows the wide receiver down instead of throwing it ahead where he's running dead into a linebacker and getting slobber knocked. So he knows the field, and he did a good job managing the ball. First down and 10 for the Hawks. Hubbard on the handoff, trying to pick his way through the middle. He tried to cut back and get some yard or so. Yeah, and there's a lot of hardcore fighting happening in that side, inside of that box. Uh, so you've got about four inches from helmet to helmet, and it's a hand fight in there, and it's a battle between eight people. Tyler Liu, the senior linebacker, making the tackle for Bishop Watterson. Give Hubbard two yards. Second down and eight. Underwood in the pistol formation here. Fakes the handoff. Rolling, throwing, and through the hands of the intended receiver, which was Joey Wooten. Yeah, if, if Joey keeps his eye on the ball, and because he did, uh, Underwood did a good job leading, if he keeps his eye on the ball and keeps tracking that, you're looking probably at a good little game for third and two, but now you have to dial it up for third and seven. And let's see if they can do that. Dial it up. Now I want to see what kind of mismatch uh, Denim Cook has down here at the bottom being 6'4", and that lanky against a shorter corner. 
Uh, so we'll see what the mismatches are. Underwood rolling. And three receivers to that side. He throws. And this is caught. And that's good for a first down at the 47-yard line. Nice job out there pulling that one in. And, uh, again, there's a lot of youth when it comes to receiving. Fidelis Samoja, the sophomore, pulled that one in, and he did it in front of Brandon Trout. And they said, let's put the, this ball game on the arm of our senior quarterback that can roll to the right. And with him rolling out, they actually ran a flood route, so there's different levels. So he had choices where with the younger quarterback, you can't do that. Older quarterback, they can see the field, they can see where the openings are, and they make that flood route and hit the choices. So Hartley moving the football. It's at the 46-yard line, their own 46. Hubbard wants to bounce to the left, has to cut back inside. A lot of work to get a yard there for Deontay Hubbard. And that's also a, an experienced running back right there. And you got an experienced cornerback and safety. Everybody's playing their role, playing their position. So this is the chess match. And for him to see that he could not turn it out to the outside and bounce it, he just turns it up, takes his couple yards, and, and keeps, uh, keeps it alive for the next play instead of losing four yards. Elliot Bauer made the tackle for Watterson, second down and nine. Low snap, Underwood hands it, or handles the snap, and then he hands it off, and then turning the corner and getting inside the 40-yard line of Bishop Watterson again is Bryson Winbush. What a game this young man's having here in the first quarter. And here you have a kid like Joey Wooten. Uh, you know, he missed that, that catch earlier, but he shakes it off. You got to shake it off and keep it moving, and he seals the corner really nicely on that block that just springs this kid for another 15 yards. Without that block, it's, it's just a one-yard game. So Hartley picking up some big yardage right there, and that'll get them into Watterson territory, feeling pretty good about themselves. A uh, methodical drive here. The offset eye formation. They're going to break a uh, man out of that formation and hand it off to Deontay Hubbard. Hubbard stutters a little bit, looking for the opening. He's dropped at the 30-yard line. Good job by uh, Watterson. There's Purcell. Told you, he's that linebacker. He just... He just uh, calls it all out there. He's a junior. He was voted captain by his teammates, and that's why for plays like that. Absolutely. And, and you get a kid that's a, a senior like Hubbard stuttering through there, just picking his way, and that's part of the body blows that both sides are trying to take and absorb, take and absorb. So that's the end of the first quarter. Bishop Watterson with a field goal is leading Bishop Hartley by the score of 3 to nothing. but the Hawks are driving. We'll be back with a second quarter from Bishop Hartley High School. Hello, I am Annie J. Ross Womack, the Executive Director of the Ohio Sickle Cell and Health Association. And I'm here to talk to the parents and student athletes about a very important topic. The NCAA has instituted different standards for all divisions of student athletes. Before you can play sports in any college or university, you must present a negative trait status or hemoglobin status documentation. Your hemoglobin status is taken at birth with the newborn screening. And what they do is they run your blood for any abnormality or any birth defect. There are thousands of newborn screening birth defects in this country. For more information about sickle cell disease, sickle cell trait testing, you can call our offices at 614-228-0157 or you can visit us via web at ohiosicklecell.org. Yeah, some wheels. Ready to go here in the second quarter. Bishop Hartley is driving. They trail Bishop Watterson by the score of three to nothing. Peyton Underwood, senior quarterback, fakes a handoff, he wants to throw, and that is off the hands of the intended receiver. Again, Joey Wooten, unable to pull that one in and turn the corner. Yeah, Joey really has to start focusing on this. Uh, you know, it's, it's inexcusable now. When you miss one, it's okay. But once you get to that second one, you really got to start focusing. So that will bring up a third down. Call it six. Yeah, we were talking about Underwood throwing the ball. His throws have been on target. The only two incompletions he has were drop balls. So he is moving this offense. And more than likely in four-down territory right here. 
Have him rolling out, and he fires it to the near sideline, and the catch is made once again. Right there, finding room, Bryson Winbush, and they won't need to worry about four down territory. They pick up the first down right there. And Bryson did a really good job looking the ball in, securing it. Uh, he bobbled it there a little bit. So you'll see it on the replay. You got quarterback scrambling to the right. He doesn't panic with this 84 defensive tackle uh, chasing him. And then he just kind of bobbles it, looks it in, and then turns it upfield, and they're going. Underwood with a handoff, and Hubbard tried to stiff arm. No can do. And just a good job to track him down, getting up off the bottom of the pile there. Elliot Barr, the junior. And that one's going to be for a loss of yardage. They'll lose at least two, almost three yards there. Yeah, it looks like they lost about three, and, and that defensive line really started punch, too. So now Hartley's offensive line is absorbing. So it's all body blows, who's punching and who's absorbing. Well, they're keyed on Deontay Hubbard, and there's no surprise to that. Hubbard takes the football again. They want to bounce him to the outside. He does turn the corner, cuts up field, and he gets hit. Still staying on his feet and moving forward, and Deontay Hubbard with his best run of the game to this point as he gets it inside the 10. And that's a great uh, film study for the young guys, how to be patient. So he goes in, he sticks his right foot in to draw the, draw the defense in, then he kicks it right back outside, and then he gets hit, and then he just starts spinning. And I love that the wide receivers are downfield blocking for him. They continue to be engaged, and he's spinning. Offensive line comes behind him, and they start moving the pile. So they have him almost at the first down marker. It'll be a third down and one. Go with the I formation here, but there is a whistle, and it looks like Watterson once again is offside. There was encroachment on the play. Yeah, and that's an easy pickup for Hartley on that. Anytime it's fourth and on, fourth on one or third and one, and you can get a penalty. Well, that'll bring up a first down and goal. Put the ball at the six-yard line. I'll tell you, Bob, I don't know why more people just don't go for that quarterback sneak. You're, you're, you're an inch away. Just fall forward. Pitch it to Hubbard. Again, he's looking for the blocks, and he gets some, and he motors over the right side into the end zone. Touchdown! Deontay Hubbard. Boy, the patience there to come to the wide side of the field, let his blockers clear a path for him, and then... Even when it wasn't totally clear, Randall, he just steamrolled through the rest. And this is the key right here. As you can see, he's looking downfield. He's almost running sideways. Just his head's on a swivel, looking for the opening. And then he hurdles over that one guy and gets in. But what I love is you got Big Davis, the junkyard dog, number 76, out there leading the way at the right tackle and just mauling people over. Colin Callahan will attempt the extra point for Bishop Hartley. And he puts it up, and that is good. So the Hartley Hawks... They come up with a touchdown, Deontay Hubbard. This is how he gets it done to put Hartley on top, 7-3. to three. And I love that the wide receivers are downfield blocking. Uh, Rory's over there, so you just basically have student body right, go wide, let's go find a hole. Absolutely. That is what they did, and that's how they get it done. Well, if you're enjoying this broadcast and you'd like to learn how it's done behind the scenes, you can check out the Ohio Media School located in Columbus. If you're interested in radio production, TV broadcasting, or digital media, the Ohio Media School is the choice for you. Visit Ohio Media School at beonair.com slash Columbus. You can also find the Ohio Media School on all your favorite social media. Ohio Media School, we change lives. 7-3, to three, Hartley and Randall, a couple of things about that. You get the touchdown, you take the lead, and you took a lot of time off the clock in doing it. Absolutely. And prior to this whole series... On defense, your defense did what they were supposed to do. And I think the number one thing that they're starting to realize is wherever number eight is, we have to be. Yeah, that's right. If you want to key on somebody, that's a pretty good choice. Squib kick, and this is a live ball. Picked up at the 25-yard line and dropped at the 30-yard line is Watterson. And I got a feeling they're not going to kick to number eight anymore. No. There's not much... 
not much reason to do that. I mean, even the, when they did, it was rolling on the ground, and he picked it up at the 10 and ran it back almost for a touchdown. So let's see how this uh, Watterson offense comes out here because it could be Radzinski as a quarterback. It could be Mackinich as a quarterback. They have that dual threat back there, and one of them's uh, – Real gunslinger, and that's A.J. Mackinich. And he is in the shotgun. And he does like to throw it to Rudzinski, and he's looking his direction, and he throws, and he's got him at the 42-yard line and steps out at the 45. That'll be good for a first down. And I don't know if Hartley has the package in or not where if he goes out the receiver, what I would do is I would, I would have a, a corner lock up on him and then have a safety over top so you bracket him constantly and force that other quarterback to go to the other side of the field. Although, to be honest with you, to go to the other side of the field is Brandon Trout, and it's been a fantastic four-year career for him. A leading receiver for Bishop Watterson. And that's part of the chess match that Watterson's playing. Oh, uh, here's some pressure. McInish comes away, wants the receiver to come back for the football, and he does. And actually, as Radzinski came back, he got to a Terry and Barber. That was a great job of defense. He locked up on him. He held him up, didn't allow him to advance, and he keeps that as a short game. And that's that's the scary part right there. So now you're buying a little bit of time. Good pressure by the uh, Hartley defense. But that quarterback got the ball out. But now here's the key. You're locked up with a, an elite receiver. I'm just going to buy enough time for my guys to get there. Absolutely. Great job by Terry and Barber. McIntosh hands it off. And the Hawks are ready for that. And they meet the ball carrier at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go that time for Trayton Mercer. Now watch Isaac on this, uh, number 77. Did an absolutely great job. Uh, so you're crashing with the inside arm. If they don't show the replay, I'll, I'll walk you through it. He crashes with the inside arm and just annihilates that offensive lineman to make that tackle. Usually you talk about it that way, and then it never happens, but he made it happen. Now watch Radzinski. He's at the top of the screen. Three receivers to the bottom of the screen here. McInish to throw, fires it down the near sideline, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. It was juggled off the fingertips of Tommy Haley, the sophomore wide receiver. That'll bring up fourth down. And that's exactly what Hartley did. Hartley bracketed Rosinski at the top, so you got a, a, a cornerback uh, playing loose underneath. You got a safety on the top, so you have to go to the other side of the field and force that quarterback to make a really great throw to a receiver that's wide open, and he just bobbles it. And Hartley's defense on the other side has to lock it up a little bit tighter because everybody has their eye on number eight. Yeah, they do. That, that's, that was a good throw, and that could have been a catch. And, you know, luckily for the Hartley Hawks, there was the bobble right there. And they're going to get the football back as Rudzinski punts it away. Fair catch called for. The ball taken at the 12 and then fumbled there for a moment. And so the Hawks have it at the 11-yard line. Whew. He muffed it and, and fell right back on top of it because that thing, once you muff it, it bounces every, every other direction. It just happened to bounce right back at him. That's Joey Wooten the re taking the uh, kick, receiving the kick right there. Now Joey's being a little lethargic out there tonight. Usually he's not this way. I don't know if the nerves has him going or if he gets – sometimes you get so amped up in the game that you get outside of yourself. And, again, these are the games that you're amped up in. Yep. Hartley, Watterson, playing DeSales, playing St. Charles. Those league games are the ones that you, you have that – you get that extra gear, but you, you have to control it. It's about control, controlling emotions in these games is almost as important as execution. Absolutely, absolutely. And he's, he's really taking the emotions out when he's out there blocking because he's latching on to his guys and, and making some good blocks too. So Underwood hands it off to Deontay Hubbard. He is hit right at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go. Gang tackled after a gain of one. It's a battle on that inside. I mean, you're talking 2,500 pounds of flesh and bone smacking against each other all day long. You got ham hocks and, 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 and rump roast and everything else in there just flying against each other, and uh, we're going to see who wins. So that short gain, well, one thing that the Hawks have been using in this game, again, they've been using their young wide receiver, Bryson Winbush, to get the big games. They've, they've brought him in motion. Uh, they've hit him with short passes, let him run after the catch. See what they go with here. And second down and long. Deep in their own territory. Take the handoff, and here's a pass. And that was almost intercepted. A diving attempt. 
at the 25 yard line. Fortunately, Charlie Bernanis didn't come up with the football, and now it's going to be third down and nine. Yeah, and it looks like there was a little bit of miscommunication between the wide receiver and the quarterback. Quarterback's reading uh, the safety, safety steps up, quick little pass, uh, but I think it was just a miscommunication between the two. Well, for Watterson right now, this is going to be interesting to watch because, um, you know, they could sell out. They know this is a, a passing down. And uh, see if they come with a blitz here. And if they do, just pick up your blocks and you can catch them in that blitz. Yeah, you almost have to run a, 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 a wide receiver right at Rosinski, stretch him out of that middle, and then run somebody underneath. Underwood rolling, and the pressure was there. He just throws it into the ground, and the Hawks are going to have to punt it away. And Hartley had the exact same play set up we just talked about. Somebody ran at Rodzinski and ran him out, and then number 86 came dragging across. He just didn't have enough time to see him. He was wide open. He would have easily had a first down and more. So the Hawks getting set to punt it away. And that's what you get into these field position ball control games. Uh, comes down to special teams. All aspects of the game comes with you. Colin Callahan taking over the punting duties this week, and this is a short kick. And this is going to roll out to the 30-yard line. Watterson is going to have fantastic field position to start this drive with 7.27 left in the first half from the Bishop Hartley 30-yard line. So, again, Randall, the, uh, the onus is being put on the defense of the Hartley Hawks. Yeah, short field and... Uh, I saw Watterson, they were coming after that punt for the punt block. I don't know if it seems like they got a finger on it, uh, but that would have been the disaster for Hartley if they would have blocked to get a scoop and score. So at least the defense has a fighting chance here. And if I'm Watterson, I'm coming out. I'm going with the fade or the deep stretch to uh, number eight. Yeah, they have him lined up on the right side. They've got uh, two other receivers that way as well. McAninch trying to step forward, and the pressure is too much. Great job. Asidu was in there. Very quickly, and uh, also getting up there for the Hartley Hawks. Denim Cook was in Denim there. Denim Cook, yes. Yeah, so I, I got my uh, my two dogs, my Rottweiler and my Pitbulls, what I call them. Uh, so you got the junkyard, junkyard dog in there, Davis and, and uh, Sidhu in there. Uh, so they met and had a nice little dance at the back, and then uh, uh, Cook comes in and cleans it up. Well, that is a huge loss. Seven yards on that loss. Second down and 17. Again, McInnitch, he's a gunslinger back there. He'll throw the ball all over the place as we get a whistle, and a timeout is called from the Hartley sideline before the play is snapped. And they had to call that timeout, and that was Birchfield called that timeout when he saw it. There was a mismatch and some confusion on the Hartley defense. So you had a, a shorter, less talented uh, corner lined up on number eight. And so they had to call the timeout really quick because they, they like having uh, – uh, number 10 on the other side because he's a 6'4 kid, a little bit lengthier, runs track, so he can match up well with him. And I think that's, that's what's going to be the matchup, and uh, just like we saw in the last play when he caught him. Take a look at the computer rankings here. Division 4, Region 15, and there you see Bishop Hartley sitting at number 9. They clinched the playoff spot a couple of weeks ago, even with that 4-5 and five record, Randall, but that strength of schedule that they've played. And it has been tough. It's been all on the road up until last week. They only have two home games this year. And they have continuously gotten better as it's gone along. Yeah, and all those road games is just basically uh, every game is practiced uh, for the playoffs is, is the way I see it. Second down, 17. Hackenich pitches it to Mercer. And he's got some room. And Anthony Murphy slowed him down. And then he's finally brought down near the original line of scrimmage. Just short of that, as a matter of fact. And it's going to leave a third down at about 12 for Bishop Watterson. Yeah, and I see Anthony Murphy starting to get a little bit hot now. So he's starting to come along here. Uh, he was player of the game last week, had a phenomenal game last week. Uh, so we want to see if uh, he can turn it on. And I, I know Watterson is really focusing on double teaming him tonight too. Brzezinski split out wide to the right. Three receivers to the left. Akinich looking to the right side where he's got three men, throws it back across the middle. The receiver falls down, and it's an incomplete pass. Well, it was intended there for Tommy Haley. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, number 86 for Hartley. Uh, what's his name there? Brandon. So Brandon is having himself a heck of a game. So he's standing up to the challenge. Lots of, lots of rushing there. 
but you got that big number 11 coming. And he has, you know, every step he takes is two steps for the regular person. Well, they're going to attempt a field goal here. The ball will be uh, kicked from the 39-yard line. Based on the last one, I think he has a little bit of a leg. So let's see if he's accurate with this long kick. Talking about 56 yards here. Here's the, the kick, and this is not going to get there. That's a line drive. I don't know if it got tipped at the line, but that one doesn't even make it. So Watterson will turn it over on downs after the missed kick. And Hartley stands strong. Remember, they gave that ball away at their own 30-yard line, and Watterson actually went backwards, never forwards. Yeah, and then that's, that's the key right there. So field position, ball control, uh, that's the game right now. So that's the chess match. Uh, so you have to punt when you punt and hope that your defense can tie, uh, tie a knot on the rope and hang on like Dick Geyer used to say. So now it's the offense that gets the opportunity to control the clock again. It, you know, go back to their scoring drive. They just uh, they control the clock. They they ran the football well. They uh, passed it well. What are so they? The, uh, so they get the ball at the twenty instead of from where they kicked it, like in the uh, college or NFL, right? So they just reset yeah. it at the twenty. That is correct. So once again, field position that uh, Watterson gets from missing the field goal. Yeah. <laughs> a decent point when you look at it that way I mean uh, picked you up 10 yards and Deontay Hubbard he's going to be caught behind the line of scrimmage looks like he'll lose one and again there's a big Cole Rett he's going to Toledo to play his college football and he's going to continue to be a menace each and every week Watterson continues to play and this league turns out so many great college football talent uh, the CCL has, has really been a powerhouse here in Central Ohio. Uh, so for all those kids out there who are looking to go big time in, in football, CCL is definitely the league to be in. Second down 11. Hand the ball off, coming to the near side, finding a little hole, and getting out to uh, the 20-yard line near the first down marker, and that's Bryson Winbush. You know, uh, you know, we talked about him tonight. This is what Richard Kenny did for years. Uh, smaller, fast receiver, catch the football and run, or just take it on a handoff like this. Yeah, and they had that package when Richard Kenny was here. They called it the, 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 the rabbits. So they'll call the rabbits, and about three of them will go out there, and they just hop around, and, you know, you can't catch them. And he has filled that role now, and I think he's getting comfortable in it for that young man. Well, he's comfortable in this game. There's no question about that. And his hands on catches, that's, that's what amazes me. So I want to see him stretch the defense a little bit. And picks up the first down. With the 11-yard gain, and so here's a handoff to Deontay Hubbard. And Hubbard, he finds some running room. Coming to the near sideline, and he is going to be hooked and drugged down out of bounds. And that's uh, Charlie Bernanis, the senior defensive back, coming up to make the stop. And watch Hubbard set up this block. Number 11 comes in. He Boom, he knows where his blocker is going to be, so he sets it up and lets the guy run right into Joey and picks up the next couple yards versus panicking and trying to bounce it all the way outside. Got a lot of tackles just by grabbing jerseys so far tonight on both sides. Oh, yeah. Got to get those tighter jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that lets you know how much juice is going through these yeah. guys, right? How pumped up they are, where you can bring a 200-pound man down with one arm. Absolutely. Tight formation here for the Hawks. Second down and short. Hand it off, and nothing doing this time. Good penetration that time by Bishop Watterson and uh, Tyler Liu was leading the way there. And Roy, Rory Ralston couldn't find much. And that's the play you want to run. Run Rory in the middle, those short yardage plays, get a couple yards, see if you can, you know, get a little closer, an inch closer. So now we're in third and, uh, third and two, and I'm looking for, for, uh, for the misdirection run here because that's what Hartley usually does because they overcompensate. Have the offset eye. They hand it to Hubbard, give it to their best back, and he gets to the outside. He turns it upfield, and he's got the first down. All he had to do was get to the 40-yard line. He gets to the 41. You know what? Patience, young man, patience. He bounces it. He sees he has nothing and puts his foot in the ground and goes for the first down. So young running backs, instead of going for the home run every time, get you a couple yards and keep, keep the uh, chains moving. Yeah, not to the level, but it's that old Le'Veon Bell type of running, right? Just slow down, let it develop in front of you, then accelerate. And then accelerate through it just like this. Yes, indeed. There he is again. Hubbard turned to the corner to get just a couple of yards. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Watterson battled to sales 
and uh, hung on to win the game 14-12. to 12. But one thing that they couldn't do, DeSales could never get to the outside. You just look at uh, Deontay Hubbard right here. There's that patience you talked about. He does get there. May only be for two or three yards, but you do that three times and you're doing well. That's right. That's right. And then that, that one that you think is going to be two or three yards, next thing you know, it turns into 12, turns into 20. And what I like is I saw Donovan uh, Davis and those guys, they were down here on the 50 out of bounds, pancaking people. <laughs> Robert Lathan's in the game now. He's a freshman running back. They have him lined up at the tailback position. Not going to hand it to him. They go with a little bit of misdirection, but uh, Watterson didn't buy it. Cole Rett was right there, and Joey Wooten got the ball, and he barely got the ball before Cole Rett was on top of him. Yeah, he got smothered right away, and uh, this is great defensive play. Uh, you use your hands, shed the block, and now you're ready to make the play. And what you have to do is if, if you're Hartley, you really have to engage in that defensive tackle a little bit longer and lock in. Now they're looking at the third down and 10. Already convert, converted one long play here on this drive. Converted a second down and 11. But a third and 10 as they approach midfield. And this ball is handed off and going to the left side and not getting the room that he's gotten earlier tonight, Bryson Winbush. This time, Watterson stays with him. They were ready for it, and they make the tackle, and immediately the punt team heads out on the field. And this is what happens when you see athlete meets athlete. There's number eight, comes right in the hole and sits. And usually Wimbush is, is used to seeing that corner being wide open, and he can bend that corner and turn it. But when you have an elite athlete back there that just flies up, and he's sitting right in the hole and makes the short tackle. Watterson is taking the time out here. Down to 224. Remaining on the clock, 7-3 to three lead for Hartley. Hartley did win the coin toss, and they deferred to the second half, so they'll get the ball to start the second half. And this is that field position, ball control. Uh, this is a 1985 football game with 2,022 kids. <laughs> uh, so it's a lot of uh, hard hitting going on out there, and it's all chess match, field position, ball control, waiting for that one team to make that mistake and pounce on it. Again, Colin Callahan. He's a place kicker, but uh, he's taking over the punting here, and the first punt that he had to make was basically right off his own goal line. He's got a little bit more breathing room here. But again, look for Watterson to rush him and try to make it tough on him. And in fact, they're going to make it really tough on him. The ball goes through his hands, and he is on it. But uh, there's going to be a whistle. Hartley is going to get uh, quite the break here because, again, Watterson jumped early, and they're offside. Well, it's field position, ball control that we talked about, but you have to make sure special teams come and play with this. So you have to maintain your composure in special teams, and uh, I think the kid just got a little bit ahead of himself. What do you do here now? They're going to get the five-yard penalty. Now the ball's at the 48-yard line. Still punting it away? It uh, looks like they are. Yeah, I'll, I'll still punt it because you want to, you know, you got two minutes, yeah. and your defense have played really well, so you don't want to put them in a bad situation. Uh, but I'm a little skittish seeing the ball go through the punter's hands like yeah. that. Good point. I'll try to get it to him this time. And they do. Bobbled a little bit, but a good job to get it away. And this will actually turn out to be a pretty good punt. It takes a Hartley roll down to the 23-yard uh, line. So now they got to go 77 yards instead of, you know, uh, yeah. you know 45 I guess there's only so many times you can give it to them at your own 30-yard line and expect to continue to have success, right? Yeah, yeah. And we always say, you know, it's the bend but don't break defense. Yes. But you can only bend so much, man. Bob, go ahead and do the Porter read. So, Watterson ready to uh, go here on this drive. Could be their last offensive drive of the half. We'll see. Only 2.09 remaining here. Akinich with a pitch. Mercer looking for running room. Finds a little bit. Over that right side, cuts back to the middle, and he's going to be close to the first down marker. He'll pick up about, I'm going to give him nine or ten. They say ten. They're already calling for the chains to be moved. Well, the Lance and Aileen Porter Foundation is a proud supporter of high school sports in Columbus. The foundation has provided food and other essentials to families in Columbus's northeast quadrant since 2018 and also established the Porter Athletic League. For more information, go to Lance and Eileen Porter Foundation.org today. Akinich with time. And that's one thing you don't like to give this guy. 
And he fires it. Off the oh, middle. picked off in the middle. And here's Hartley coming back the other direction, headed toward the end zone. And it's That's a Rory. touchdown. Touchdown. Rory Ralston with the pick six. Well, I tell you what, Rory needs to go over to number 10 and give him a high five and say thank you for the pick because that corner at the top had number eight locked down. Uh, and that's where they were going. And the quarterback had a pump, and he came right underneath it. And he was trying to come across the middle of the field to hit the big uh, tight end. Michael Malagreca, but you see where Rory Ralston took it, right back to the end zone. And that's why Rory's one of the top linebackers in, in his grade level here in the state of Ohio. I know he went out to Penn last week to go visit. A little bit of a high snap, and the extra point is blocked. And so the Hawks don't get that 14th point. They have to settle for six there, but they still lead by 10. Up on Waterson, 13 to three. Yeah, it was a sift there on the right-hand side. Um, but I tell you, Rory's a special kid, good size, good athlete, uh, and this is why he, he gets recruited. Um, for a kid his size with his athletic ability, that's the kind of kid that most college coaches just dream about because he's so hard-nosed, uh, lots of speed out there, very tough, physical, but he's also a great kid in the classroom. Uh, so I talk to all of these kids to figure out who they are, what they're about, um, and when they come out here, they have that standard that they have lived to live up to, and the standard is the standard here at Hartley. Mm -hmm, absolutely. That was Charlie Bernardus, the uh, senior Bishop Watterson, that blocked that extra point. And that's one thing about these games. Is that one point going to come back to be a problem for you later in the game? Who knows? We'll find out. But that's why every point is important when you're playing in these rivalries. Yeah, in the chess match, right? So uh, Hartley goes to punt, and they're in a bad situation. Watterson's defense did a great job, and then they jump off sides on the punt. And now you're losing field position. You have to re-punt it again. That's right. They would have been... Basically knocking on the door, right? That's right. See if they go with a squib kick again. They will. Taken at the 18-yard line, up over the 25, 30-yard line. Bernardes takes a hit. There's flags all over the place here. And uh, finally brought down at the 39. But let's see what the flags are for. And I tell you, if I'm water, there's another flag just went up late again. So things are getting a little chippy down there on the sideline. Well, that's not a surprise. Now they got to sort all this out. This looks like rush hour traffic on 270 after an accident. <laughs> Just sort it all out. Yeah, and if I'm, if I'm Watterson and number 15 catches the ball, I'm just saying, hey, pitch it back to number eight. <laughs> Let yeah. him run it. And, you know, anytime there's this, this uh, massive amount of field to go on the sideline here, so there's the tackle. Uh, and let's see what happens here at the end uh, that caused the extra... Right there, number 33, uh, pushed him in the face. Uh, I think that's, uh, uh oh, that's Fiend Dog. So uh, I know Pat Feeney, that's his son. And uh, Pat's a great athlete. Pat used to play football here at, at Hartley. And uh, so he's going to have to really talk to Gavin tonight. And uh, Mr. Feeney is, is, a, is a heck of an athlete here. So he had to hold. against uh, Watterson, then the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Hartley. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Gavin Feeney, if you ever see that kid, he's a, he's a specimen of a kid, right? And uh, he's just excited to be in the game. But you have to, like you said earlier, you have to have your emotions in check. And uh, Gavin's got his dad's nickname, Fiend Dog. First down at 10 from the 45-yard line. And it is Rodzinski, the quarterback. And he is tackled in the backfield. What a job to just shoot the gap right there by the Hartley defense, Denham Cook. Yeah, big number eight. Uh, he has that speed. He's 6'4 with a lot of speed. He reads the play. And now he just finds his gap and shoots through the offensive lineman, goes low, takes out those legs, and tackle for loss on an elite athlete. Back to the 39-yard line. Lost to six on the play. Under a minute to go here in the first half as Rudzinski takes it, hands it off to Mercer. Mercer breaks through and is going to be dropped 
Back at the 45-yard line, and that'll get him back to the original line of scrimmage. Rory Ralston again on the tackle. And that Rory kid's a tackling machine in there, so he's really holding that defensive down. Uh, but most importantly, that defensive line is holding up uh, all of the traffic for these linebackers to make tackles. Watterson with 20 seconds left in the half. Radzinski taking the snap, but there was movement prior to the snap of the football. And it was the uh, defense jumping off sides, or was it the offensive line moving? Let's see. It's the defense. It's these little five-yard penalties that really put you in a pickle. Now, Watterson has two timeouts left, but they are it's down to 15 seconds left on the clock. They're just going to play it out, apparently. And this is part of the game that I don't like. You have to push up on these wide receivers and pee their route. And here's a throw, and Mercer can't catch it. Well, you know, Mercer's out there trying to catch that swing pass, and as he looks up, he sees Denham Cook, 6'4", 210 pounds, just rolling headfirst down at him. Uh, now, are you saying that would make you change your mind or, no. or, or, or play into it? That would make me a little apprehensive. <laughs> that would make me a little That's apprehensive. That's the word. That's the word uh, right and, there. And, and yeah. we call that making a business decision. Yes. <laughs> Well, they do say now with the athletes, your body is a corporation, right? So you, you have to make a business decision. You're the chairman of the board. That's right. That's right. <laughs> are we doing the ER tonight or are we going to play another uh, get down? Here's the uh, punt. And this will be a short kick. The Hawks have no interest in playing this football whatsoever because it's going to roll down to the 10-yard line. In fact, time runs out. That's the way the first half ends. What a first half it winds up being. Bishop Watterson drove down to start the game, and they got themselves a field goal, and after that, it's been all Bishop Hartley. One long drive that resulted in a touchdown and another pick six by linebacker Rory Ralston, and that is how the Hawks have built a 13-3 lead here at the half. So, well played, well executed to this point by well, the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good game when alumni start coming into the press box that start talking to us, right? And if you look right behind you, Bob, you got, you got people lined up behind us. And, you know, these Hartley folks over here, they go crazy for these kind of matchups. So when you get a, a, all of the Powell family comes in here, legends, Jim Powell uh, played over at Ball State. They come all the way from Indiana just to come watch this game. And you got the Powell family coming here. They got a cheerleader that's leaving. Well, right now, uh, Brad Birchfield, the head coach of the Hartley Hawks, is getting into position with our own Will Ward. Will, take it away. I'm here with Coach Birchfield. Coach, you guys have controlled the first half very well. Um, you got a big play at the end of the first half. How? What do you think about your play uh, for the, the first half for your team? Well, we're trying to make them earn the length of the field, and I think we're doing a pretty good job not letting them have the deep ones. Obviously, eight's a really good player. He's made a couple plays on us. Um, but we really got to control the football, and try our best to, to make it a fourth quarter game, a one score game in the fourth quarter. So see where we're at. So what do you think you guys, guys would have to do in order to stop the quarterback and uh, the offense uh, production from them in the second half? Yeah, it's a big, big challenge, challenge, but, but uh, uh, obviously just kind of play it inch by inch and don't let them rip off big ones and keep making them earn the length of the field. Obviously, get a, if we get another score, the clock's on our side. So these are things, but it's going to be, a, you know, the, the team that wins got the ball at the end kind of. All right, thanks for your time and good luck in the second half. Back up to you guys. Very much, Will. Brad Birchfield happy with the way that his team's played so far. Why wouldn't you be? But you heard what he said. You get into the second half of this game, you have to work on making sure there's no uh, no big plays. No big plays. And then the key is, you know, everybody from Hartley's coming in. Matt Barnes just came in, the Hall of Famer, comes in here and has advice to give everybody about what needs to happen next. That's right? just in regular life for him. That's not just tonight. He oh, always is that what has that advice is? for everybody. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Movie star status. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's what it is. That's right, that's right. But it is a fun night here. It is senior night here at uh, Bishop Hartley, and we saw uh, the seniors and the football players and the cheerleaders coming out with their families, and it really sets a tone for a game like this and a night like this, and uh, it's a nice first half build off of that. But, again, we're only halfway through. Only halfway through. That's why they, they call it a, a second half. And I'm sure Watterson's going to make some adjustments. And they're noticing that, you know, number 10 is, is locked on to number 8 wherever he goes. And their best option, I think, is to put him at quarterback and uh, create a lot of pressure. Well, you saw what happened. He went back there, especially after that pick that uh, McInnish threw. And, 
you go back a couple of weeks ago, he threw four of those in the DeSales game, and they had to hold on and win that one. So maybe a little less of a margin for error, shorter leash, if you will, uh, in making mistakes on the Watterson side. It's got to be that way. They're down by 10. Yep, absolutely. And Hartley has to just continue to be patient running the ball. And the quarterback has really come out and done a good job just hitting those little dink passes, little dink passes. But I really want to see if Winbush can stretch that number eight a little bit more at that free safety. Run a couple fly patterns. You don't have to throw it to him. Just run him to get his legs tired. Yeah, that, that's going to be fun to watch. And, and he has been a big part of this first half. Bryson Winbush, sophomore, he's going to be involved in these CCL rivalry games for a while. And and this is a – he's had a great first half performance in this one to, to build on. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what these games are all about, right? You start to build your own legacy uh, in these traditional games. So all the younger kids – have a chance right now to really make a name for themselves and add to the legacy to help those seniors and send them out on the right path. And this is all just building up towards the playoffs for both teams. So iron sharpens iron in this specific league. Yes, that's a, that's a great way to put it. They are both going to the playoffs. They both have high hopes of going a long way in the playoffs. They want to play for a long time. They want to be playing at Thanksgiving and beyond, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's uh, I went in a couple of weeks, talked to the team, a couple of weeks ago and talked to the team. And then one of the things that I brought up was there's a, a little team down in Cincinnati called uh, St. Uh, Saint, uh, X or something, right? Maybe people know about that team. They came into the playoffs 5-5 five and five in 2015 and ended up winning the state championship at 5-5, five and five. the first team ever in the history of Ohio to do that. So Hartley has a chance right now to be back in the path of history again. And once again, there they are at uh, number nine, Steubenville, leading. Uh, Division Four, Region 15 right now. But you know what? I was talking with Brad Birchfield before the game and, and talking to him about how his team has gotten better week after week. And he said, hey, I'm telling you, we knew two weeks ago we were in the playoffs, and that is a great luxury to have, knowing that you're going to be in. And when you look at that list, he said the, that list of teams above them, nobody's looking forward to the Hartley Hawks coming in and playing no matter what the record is after tonight. That's right. That's right. And then the, the key to that is you can see it tonight. Once you make the playoffs, all of a sudden everybody's a little looser. Uh, the play calling is a little bit looser. Uh, the formations is definitely a little bit looser. You got kid back and shotgun a little bit more uh, than normal, and then it goes up under center. There's four wides now, uh, and sometimes they pack it in in the traditional set. So everybody's a little bit looser. Now you can also try out some different things because you want to give some different looks and film study for the other teams because birchfield has been down this road before the playoffs, so you know what film you have to put out there to kind of create this window dressing. Absolutely. We are at the half here at Bishop Hartley, the Bishop Watterson Band on the field right now, entertaining the folks, and it's uh, good attendance from both sides here tonight in this classic CCL matchup. 13-3, to the Hartley Hawks are leading Watterson at the half. You're watching Bishop Hartley football. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes! Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Ohio. Because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. Hi, I'm Doug Ute, Executive Director of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. For more than 115 years, the OHSAA has promoted school sports as an important part of the students' educational experience. Interscholastic athletics teach participants lifelong lessons of hard work, teamwork, and self-discipline, along with sportsmanship, integrity, getting along with others, and overcoming adversity. One thing the pandemic has taught us is that being on a team with our friends is more important than ever before. So as you continue your journey in athletics, remember the importance of also working hard in the classroom. Always give your best, never give up, and have fun while you're doing it. As an Ohio native and former athlete who learned these same lessons myself, I encourage our young people to focus on your academics so that you can continue the privilege of participating on your team. After all, the lessons that school sports teach us today will prepare you for the wins and losses in life tomorrow. Education is the key to life's successes. It is that week where we all really 
follow the high school football computer rankings and really dive into them. And he's been a guest on our program many times before. Earlier this year, he visited with us, and we thought, well, we're in the last week of the regular season. Let's get one more word, the final word of the regular season, I guess, from our friend Joe Idle, who joins us tonight. Joe, always good to see you. I, I asked you when we had you on earlier this year how busy weeks are for you. Is this week any different being the last week of the regular season, or for you is it just simply, well, we just continue to plug and put everything into where we normally put it, but is it, is it any busier for you this week? Uh, not really. Uh, it's, it's pretty much business as usual. You know, I've got my standard uh, handful of Thursday night games and then the 300-plus Friday games and a 10 to 20 on Saturday. So it, it, from my perspective, it, it's pretty business as usual just i just try to be a little quicker so uh, i know a lot of coaches <laughs> coaches are refreshing often and uh they want to kind of see if, if their status changes to clinch spot or clinch a home game or, or what have you do you get calls or emails or texts or anything from coaches asking you questions about uh what what do we need to do to win this week or uh, i mean mm -hmm. sure you you you've you've heard it from fans and things along those lines but you get questions for calls from coaches uh yeah i get, I get a lot of uh uh, emails and uh, Twitter messages as well, you know, kind of asking exactly what you said, like what what needs to happen for us to get in, or what needs to happen for us to get a home game, or what happens if you know another team wins, will they pass us? Things things like that. So yeah, I get a handful of those. I've, I've actually got a backlog of posts I got to work through here in the next uh, day or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. Some of the coaches, I, I, I never get through all of them, but I, I, try I wouldn't to get doubt it. As I, many as I, can. I, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> it's funny. Some of the coaches I talk to during the week, especially in a week like this, I, I always ask them the question if it's a game that has playoff implications, and I get a chance to call one of those Friday night in the southern part of the state, but I always ask them, are, do you spend time looking at those? Do you watch them? And, and I'm sure there are a lot, a lot of the coaches take the coaches answer. No, we don't pay any attention to that. But then there are some, and these are probably the guys you hear from, that say, you know, we have a guy on our, on our staff, that's his, one of his duties, mm -hmm. is to watch Joe Idle and watch the poll. So I, I don't think it's all that surprising that you're getting calls like that, is it? Uh, no, not really. Uh, it's, you know, I've been doing this for 20, 23 years now, so it, it kind of comes with the territory. I, I get a handful of those each year. So, And like you said, uh, a lot of the coaches have someone on their staff that uh, is – familiar with the system and kind of knows how it works, you know, kind of just bounce ideas off of me to see if, if they're also coming up with the same conclusions about who needs to win and who needs to win. In looking at the rankings, and I, I go through them a lot to see where teams from the area, I call some games in are located, and, and some other schools that I've followed over the years and to see what chances they have. For example, I, I've brought up on my, on my laptop here, I have uh, Division One, region number three, which is basically uh, the, the 18 schools in that region are all from the Ohio Capital Conference. And you look towards the bottom of that, and of the, well, the goodness, almost half the teams that will get in right now have losing records. That could change certainly going in uh, to uh, or after Friday night. But uh, on the far right of that, as you move over about three or four columns, you have with a win, they could be between four or 10. With a loss, they could be between nine and 13. And that's one of the things I think that uh, the possible seed ranges, I think that may be the spot, Joe, where a lot of people spend a lot of their time looking at because Every, again, most coaches I talk to, they want to be in the top eight. They want to host one of those first round games. So when they get ready to play, they have a pretty good idea of where they're going to be coming out of the game. But is, is, is that one of the, the, the portions of what you do that probably gets some of the most hits, you would think? Uh, yeah, especially here this final week. Uh, and, and that's kind of, I, I actually put that with a win with a loss in last year. Um, it was kind of a suggestion that uh, someone made on Twitter, and it's, it's been something I kind of tossed around uh, for a while, and I just went ahead and did it. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely uh, – and, and my recommendation would be if you're looking at my site on Friday night as scores are entered, granted it takes me usually three hours to enter them all in, so you'll you'll see things kind of in flux throughout the night. So the the current rank all the way on the left will become meaningless. Um, it, it's uh, – that's, that's kind of where you were at after nine weeks that tells you nothing in terms of week 10. Uh, whereas the column you're mentioning there that kind of gives you the idea of 
who it'll be uh, after the week 10, uh, at least after your game finishes. You know, like you said, you could be between four and 10 with a win. Well, that just, that tells you that your your game alone isn't enough. You've got to wait for the other games to kind of come in, your second level games, your other teams in the region that may pass you or fall below you uh, and whatnot. So that, that's really the key column uh, to follow um, on Friday night. The, the level two column, Joe, that's the one that I think teams really, or coaches or whomever's doing it for a team or fans, whatever, that's the one that really, I think, kind of holds the most weight. Am I correct in that? Because you get points from the teams you beat and you get their points, and that factors into the level two, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm voicing it correctly. So that's maybe the, one of the more important categories of all the ones you have listed there. Uh, certainly, that's the level two is for the majority of teams, uh, at least the teams at the top, that's that's where the most of your points are going to come from. That's your 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 ranking is is almost always directly correlated to that in some way, shape, or form. Now, with the expanded playoffs down to sixteen, you know, as you get kind of lower down in some of the divisions, the sixteenth team may only have like seven or ten second level points. So in that case, uh, it actually has a little less uh, importance, and your level one points may come into play more of that's kind of a unique thing we've only kind of been seeing here with the expanded playoffs mm -hmm. but uh when it used to be eight eight top eight um it was almost you know your second level points are are huge um it, like it it's a huge percentage of your total when you get to this point of the season the movement for a team won't be that great. For example, you've already got, again, I'll reference the one I, I'm looking at right now, that, that region of Division One where Gehanna has clinched the number one spot and they've also clinched a home game. Chances are teams aren't going to fall a lot of spaces. I mean, some of the things, the projections you have in the possible seed ranges, there's a two to six. Pickering to North, for example, uh, with a loss could drop can end up anywhere between 2 and 10. That looks to be one of the wider spreads in that. But you, normally, Joe, you don't see a team take a deep plunge if they lose a game this week of the regular season if they're one of the top 16 teams, one of the top eight teams, do you? Uh, I would say normally I would say that's true. <laughs> uh, and, and a lot of times that, that low range is almost like a chaos you know, type of range. You, you'd have to have a, quite a string of upsets in order for a team to kind of plunge that far uh, normally. Now, there was a scenario, I believe, uh, I don't know, four, four or five years ago where uh, uh, Kenston High School, Geauga County, was they were number two after nine weeks, but they hadn't clinched and they didn't control their destiny. You know, they had a, I think they were playing a team that only had maybe two wins. And there were seven or eight teams directly underneath them that all had huge uh games in terms of points with like, you know, playing a team with six wins, seven wins, eight wins. And enough of those teams won that the, all of them jumped Kenston and Kenston fell down to, I believe, number nine and missed the playoff. Wow. And I believe I believe the next year they actually uh, won the state title. So who knows what could happen here. But uh, normally they, you won't fall that much, but it certainly, uh, depending on who the other teams in your region are playing, um, uh, it's certainly possible. And I think the great thing about this is, and there's been so much debate, Joe, and I'm sure you've heard it as well, too, about the expansion to 16 and what that has done. Some, there's a, a great faction that say it's diluted the postseason. Uh, a team that's 3-6 and six or 3-7 and seven has no business trying to play for a state championship. And I get that argument. But what it's also done as well, too, is you get to this point of the season, and there are games that five years ago, four years ago, before this format was instituted, that other than bragging rights and whatnot, really wouldn't be a whole lot of interest to fans. Well, now you've got a truckload of games, uh, especially those teams that are on the fringe of the of the eight nine line uh, that want to win, and, and it means a lot to them. They know they're in, but they have a chance to get a home game or improve their seating. So, not that games don't mean anything at all, but this just adds a little bit of extra oomph to what you're seeing on Friday nights. I think that, from that standpoint, it, it's a good thing. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I would, I would agree with that. And like, like you mentioned, I, I see that point too. It, you know, a free win team probably isn't going to make any noise in the playoffs. But uh, in, in some regions, the 16th seed won't be a three win team. There, there's some where it might be a five and five team. Um, and we saw uh, uh, St. Xavier in Cincinnati a handful of years ago. They went in the playoffs five and five, and they they won a championship. So um, I, that's probably not going to be a likely scenario, but um, I don't know. You look at a Region 8 and a team like uh, LaSalle at Cincinnati kind of hanging in there. Um, I, 
I wouldn't want to play LaSalle in the first <laughs> round if they're a 16 seed, um, you know, if they, if they happen to get in. Uh, so it, it's it's unlikely that a team like that would make noise, but uh, it, it, it could happen. It in could the right happen. Side. Absolutely. One of the ones we're going to talk about rivalries coming up here shortly. And one of the teams that I was looking at was, was Kent McKinley and they're five and four right now. They lost their first four games. Now they've won five in a row and they're third in their region. It's a power pack region. They happen to reside in, in division one. They just happen to be, have the luck of being stuck in the region with St. Ed and mentor and people like that. But at the same time, they're five and four, they're fourth in their region. And again, I would think they kind of fall into that category as well, too, Joe, that you just mentioned. Uh, four losses, you don't want to see them in the first round. Uh, that, that's a pretty good football team. So, again, that's where the rankings, yeah. I think, are, are, are – you can look at them uh, different ways, but that's where I think when you look at those records, you kind of maybe toss them out the window a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would agree completely. Uh, you know, even, even St. Ignatius, you know, it's uh, Chuck Crowell's last year. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, they might make a run. They're uh, five wins and uh, mm -hmm. uh, potentially six here after this week. But uh, yeah, it, it, once especially in Division One, I, I mean, it, all the teams here, um, you know, have athletes. There's no doubt. You know, you get athletes on the field in a playoff atmosphere. Anything can happen. And there's no question. Uh, and uh, as we wrap it up, Joe, uh, it's an exciting time. I know it'll be a busy time for you as well, too, uh, with all this coming up. Uh, what is it like for you the week after the, 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 the computer is all tabulated, everything is all set, and the playoffs are underway? Do you just kind of sit back and lay back in the chair and just kind of relax and pop open a cold one? I got through another year with no problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, basically, yeah. That's, that sounds accurate. You can say it in a um, minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge relief, you know, to get through that tenth week and and hope and pray that this isn't the year that I flip a week ten score and mark someone as clinched when I didn't. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't think I've had that problem since the first year when I uh, used a different source for scores, um, and there were like five or six wrong scores in the, the final week. So uh, me to say that's not the source I use anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have had a pretty good, uh, track record here lately, so I don't want to jinx that. I remember, uh, <laughs> one more question just, just kind of popped in my mind and, uh, our show runner, Adam Dell, uh, mentioned it as well too. And it's a great question. I'm sure people would like to know this as well too. You, you touched on it. Your scores, where do you get them from? I'm sure right now, social media, there's so many different venues to do that, but, and you can run into situations where somebody is not reporting a score correctly. So you have a number of options to kind of fall back on, I would think, and just double check all your work, don't you? Uh, yeah, so uh, ma majority of them I get from Twitter, from especially the school accounts, the athletic directors or coaches or, or whoever, uh, as well as sports writers throughout the local areas. Um, those are kind of the ones I kind of rely on the most just because you know generally they're covering the game you know and i can also follow the updates as they occur so i can kind of see um, if something uh, looks out of place there was a scenario earlier in the year where um one, one of the school accounts accidentally re reversed their own score at the end but i had been following along and, and i knew they were winning uh, so i was able to kind of uh, detect that that's um so yeah it happens but uh so yeah that's why i kind of try to get uh you know folks that I believe are at the game uh, whenever possible. And then uh, uh, for the others, I uh, kind of rely on uh, some emails and um, whatnot from coaches. Uh, sometimes it's come, you know, an hour after the game, which we know why sometimes it takes three hours to finally enter all the scores. But uh, it's, I actually find um, quite a, quite a large amount on just on Twitter these days. Because right. That's the one thing about social media. So, so many yeah. active. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it, it, it's a busy place on Fridays when you're talking high school sports, no doubt about it. Joe, it's always a pleasure having you on and talking to you about the high school football playoffs. And you do great work, and I know I'm, I, I speak for a lot of people when, when I say we really appreciate the effort you put into this and uh, your association with, with the OHSCA as far as how you handle all of this. It's, uh, it, it's something that I think high school football fans love. Uh, they spend so much time going to that site right there that we have up on our, our webpage or up on our uh, screen right now uh, so folks can access it as well too. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I thank you for your time and uh, sit back and relax next week, would you? And just kind of take it easy. <laughs>
Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Appreciate it. All right. Joe, Joe Idle joining us here tonight on OhioFootballWeekly.com. He almost looked like, like he's ready to do that right now, didn't he? Like he's, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to take a break out of all this right now. But again, uh, he does great work. And I'll tell you this, I, I, I have trouble opening my own email, and I would have a hard time doing what he does. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I'm sure I speak for a lot of high school football fans across the state of Ohio uh, that we're thankful for what he does and the effort he puts into it. So, again, thanks to Joe Idle. Back here at Bishop Harley High School, where the Hawks have a 13-3 lead at the half over Bishop Watterson. Bob McElligot and Randall Sampson back here with you. Randall, great first half. We talked about that. Now it's time to get rolling here in half number two. Yeah, half number two. I want to see uh, the chess match continue. You know, what kind of adjustments are they going to make on, uh, on both sides of the ball for Watterson and for Hartley? And I think that it's going to come down to at the end, fourth quarter with the kicking game. Uh, that might uh, tip the balance for both teams either way. So we're really going to have to take a look at that. And where do we put number eight? Uh, you know, does he stay at the quarterback? Uh, do you put him out and uh, get locked up with two, uh, two, two double coverage out there? Or what are you going to do? Uh, so we'll, it'll be interesting to see the, the chess match and the adjustments that they make and uh, keep the baby vulture <laughs> under control. <laughs> Well, we've got some uh, great things coming up here at Bishop Harley High School. Save the date for the Evening of Excellence. That is on Saturday, April 15th. It'll be coming up, so, uh, you know, things are certain. Taxes and the Evening of Excellence, April 15th. <laughs> April 15th, Evening of Excellence. If they're out there bidding, guess what? I think this year, once again, I will put the Naples house up for auction. And it was not destroyed or damaged or touched in the hurricane. So it's one of the few homes that's down there that's still standing. Makes it more valuable. Makes it more, hey, makes it more valuable for the evening that's of excellence. Right. That's so right. come put your bid in, come get some sun, come get some fun. Also, uh, we got uh, the uh, golf coming up. Uh, the congratulations to the 2022 winners, Jenny Osman, Steve Prout, Andy Lale, Scott Wise. And uh, the next one's coming up on August 6, 2023. I got a chance to play in that. That was a great time. Yeah, so you, you're a golfer out there? Were you, were you swinging them hard well, I, and long? I, I was out there. I, I, said, <laughs> I don't know if I would say I was a golfer, but I was out there. Uh, so it was a good time. What about T.T. Murphs? I know you love that place. Oh, I tell you what, we've been going to T.T. Murphs for decades. It is an institution here on the east side of Columbus, and they do a good job over there. It's like cheers. You walk in, everybody knows your name. They say, hey. Uh, and some guys have their pictures up there. Jerseys are hanging up. So it's really a great family atmosphere. All right. Getting ready to start the second half here, and Hartley deferred after winning the toss. And so they get the football, and they will try to get some more points put on the board. And it's a long kick. This one is going to be taken at the goal line. And up over the 10-yard line, trying to cut to his left and actually giving up ground was Fidela Samoja. And, uh, boy, this ball is going to be placed with a forward progress out at the 10-yard line. Long field here for the Hartley Hawks. Will Ward is down on the sidelines. Will, what did you learn at halftime? I had a chance to talk with Coach Burfield coming out of the locker room. And one thing he wanted his team to do in the second half was limit the down the field passing and make them run the ball more. Uh, one thing he wanted to do on offense was control the clock and continue to go into the fourth quarter strong. Back up to you guys, Bob. Thank you very much, Will. First down and 10 from the 10. Send a man in motion. Quick handoff on the left side. Watterson's defense right there for a stop after a gain of about one. Now for Watterson, we saw Hartley in the first half start in this similar field position, and Watterson was just all out on the defense here, and that's what they're trying to do right now. They want to pin them. They want to get the football back in good field position. The last thing that they can really afford to do is let Hartley go on one of those long runs, chew up a lot of clock, and get points. Yeah, and that's that special teams that we talked about. Uh, on the kickoff, you bobble it. You take it at the goal line when you shouldn't have. Now you're at the 10 and, and clawing and fighting. Winbush takes the football. He wants to get to the outside. He gets a block. Good cutback inside, and he only got to the 15-yard line. That was... 
a lot of uh, juking there just to get to the 15-yard line, but it was well worth it, and the tackle was made by Elliott Barr. Yeah, and one bush is a little bitty dude, so, you know, he doesn't want any of that smoke that's on the inside, so he always tries to get to the outside, but he had enough courage to, uh, to get back to the inside and get a couple yards for his team. Yeah, really smart because there was, there was no room there, as you said, on the corner, trying to run to the short side of the field. He recognized and adjusted quickly. It's third down and a long five. And he'll pitch it to Hubbard, and he loses his footing and falls in the backfield. Lauer right there again on the tackle, and uh, the Watterson defense got exactly what they wanted. They get a three and out here as Hartley is going to have to punt the football away. Yeah, and Watterson was ready for this. It's the, it's the play on the inside uh, for Hartley that they go to the, to the boundary on the short side of the field with the quick little pitch, and now we have to see can they uh, can get the turn going on here. Elliott Bauer with a couple of big plays. Two out of three. And here is the punt. And this is a spiral kick headed toward the sidelines. Where did it go out is going to be the question. Well, it looks like they're going to get it just north of the 40. At about the 42, 41, he's walking it back all the oh, way inside the 40. Inside the 40 to the 35, 36-yard line. Yeah, that looks like your, your sand wedge when you, uh, when you uh, chip it there. You hit it past the hole and let it just yo-yo back, Bob. <laughs> when I hit it past the hole, it's usually in the woods or in the water. <laughs> well, the Bishop Watterson now, they, they come out here with a, a great opportunity to start the second half. A.J. McInich at the quarterback position. And he looks to his right, and he throws, and that ball is incomplete. Tight end, Michael Malagreca was the intended receiver. Well, and you had the baby vulture down here at the bottom, and he was running a go route on uh, the corner. They got a bracket, but the safety got a little sleepy out there. He was peeking on the inside, so watch, uh, watch the vulture. He's going to get a little one-on-one -on -one opportunity here, and I think he's going to climb the ladder if they don't uh, uh, make sure to keep an eye on him. That's Ryan Radzinski that you're talking about. He's at the bottom of the screen as the wideout. Shift Mercer into the backfield in the pistol formation, toss it to him. And Mercer able to break through. He's going to be short of the first down by just a couple of yards. And he was really running downhill on that. Uh, he, he was patient, found a hole, and uh, really turned the corner on that. And their offensive line did a good job staying locked on their blocks. And he just went downhill and, and got a really good run for about uh, eight yards there. So third and two, uh, that makes it manageable. You got plenty of, uh, plenty of plays there. And they got a kicker that has a good leg, but I think this is four down territory. Yeah, I think it is too. There's no question about that. This time, uh, Radzinski's at the top of the screen, wide out to the right. Akinich sparking the signals here and resetting a little bit. Handing it off, Mercer gets hit, and Mercer is stopped. And this is going to be a loss back to the 30-yard line. And it's going to make it a little bit more challenging for Bishop Watterson. Yes, yeah, so Watterson lined it up and said, well, we're going to run it right at your pit bull and at your Rottweiler with Davis in the middle and, and uh, Isaac in there. And they both said, no, sir, you're not. The junkyard dog, Davis, uh, fought through it and came up nice, nasty, and mean in there. Big play right here. Fourth down and four from the 30-yard line. Brzezinski out wide to the right once again. Mercer dropping back deep. And they pitch it to him. Mercer to the near side. He's hit. He's brought down. And Watterson will turn the ball over. Once again, shooting the gap, Denham Cook. Denham Cook came flying in. That's what this kid does. A tackle for losses. He's all over the place. But most important, you'll see the junkyard dog engage number 76. And he comes running downfield and cleans up. That's what it's all about. And you got Rory coming over the top. So it's a flying defense for Hartley. Well, Hartley who went three and out. To start this third quarter, they wind up uh, getting the ball back on offense at their own 32-yard line. Go with three men in the backfield. Pitch it to Deontay Hubbard, and he comes through, and he's across the 40-yard line holding on to the football as he picks up the first down. Yep, and Bob, that's what we were talking about earlier. You get the uh, quick little hitters where it's a couple yards here, a couple yards there, maybe two yards, maybe four, but you go back to the same play with patience, then you get 10. And then you get 15, then you go back to two, four, and you get another eight. So that's the rotation that we're going after. Well, Peyton Underwood managing this offense very well tonight. Again, senior quarterback, 
knows exactly the style of game that they want to play. They want to run the football, and when they haven't had the success in running it and they've asked him to pass the ball, he's done a nice job in doing so here tonight. First down and 10. Bring Wooten in motion into the backfield. Hand it off again to Hubbard. Hubbard, a little stutter step again. He's going to not only pick up short yardage, but then bust through for a big game. It looked as though he was going to be stopped after a gain of two, but he wanted to get about five or six more. Yeah, and he kept those legs churning. He followed Rory right through there and kept moving, and he's, he's uh, doing that hack squat where you turn him backwards and you're just backpedaling. That's the hack squat that you do all offseason in, in the weight room, and it's paying off here tonight. Yeah, and the Hawks had to spend a couple of weeks without Deontay Hubbard, so not only great to get him back, but to get him back in the final game of the regular season and get a good tune-up for the playoffs. Yeah, and it's, it's really good patience as he comes out to play wide receiver now a little bit. He's in the slot. And you got Rory back there by himself, so let's see what they bring. And they do hand it off to Rory Ralston. And quick hitter up the middle, and he's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. This is exactly the kind of football that the Hawks want to play right here, running the football, running the clock on Bishop Watterson. And I like the, little, the level of window dressing that they're doing. You know, you're splitting guys out, moving them around. It's all the basic same plays, off tackle or the quick hitter on the inside, but you're creating a lot of window dressing, things for the defense to think about. And there. here we have just the stacked eye. There it is. And they hand it off to the man that was dotting that eye. That's Deontay Hubbard. And he didn't get anything. They're going to mark it down at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be fourth down and one for the Hawks. There's just a massive amount of bodies on the inside. You have that stacked eye, and you got big old 76 in there, big 65 for, for Watterson, and they're just clogging it all up. So we'll be able to uh, see how close they get. What, about a yard or so, Bob? Yep. And this might be a little bit too far for that quarterback sneak, so you're really going to have to move some bodies on the inside. They stack it up again, and they hand it to Hubbard, and Hubbard gets hit and then lunges forward. The second effort may have gotten him what he needed. We'll have to wait and see where they spot it. Watterson is uh, celebrating that they feel they got the stop. Yeah, he got bounced around in there pretty good. They might have to pull the chains out on this um, if they can't eyeball it. And the officials are down there just trying to figure out uh, where to place the ball right now. Referee goes over and takes a look at it. And they are going to bring the chains. Well, it was the second effort by Deontay Hubbard, as we talked about there. Yeah, and that's, that's the key of having that senior running back, being patient, getting hit, not panicking, and continue to fall forward, find that crease, and uh, just kind of slither around. So let's see what the chains do. And you might want to put a couple kinks in the chain if you're Hartley, and you want to take a couple <laughs> kinks out if you're uh, Watterson. And it is a turnover on downs. And it's a game of inches, right? So here's the replay on the game of inches. Just going forward, it's just a whole bunch of bodies. He gets hit in there, gets driven back. He turns sideways, does that hack squat, leaning back. And, you know, you're looking at uh, the length of a penny is what they're missing it on. Elliot Bauer made the initial contact. Charlie Bernardis was the guy that uh, got the tackle. And Watterson gets the ball back. That's huge for them. And this is the game that, that both sides have to play. I mean, there's no running away from it. And Brzezinski and Trout. On the right side, McInnish will throw it down the middle, and that's over the intended receiver. So he was trying to get it to Tommy Haley. And I really like that play on Watterson's call. Let's go for the home run ball. Let's stretch the Hartley defense a little bit. Let's see if those safeties are really peeking in to really jump on the baby vulture there. Stopping the clock with 5.48 to go here in the third quarter. I'll tell you one guy that hasn't even been involved in this game tonight is Brandon Trout, the senior wide receiver. Again, he's uh, he's been their top guy throughout his career. He's in the slot to the right. They hand this one off, and good run here as Trayton Mercer. He got hit about three yards short of the first down marker, and then he powered through that would-be tackler, and he gets the first down. Yeah, and that, that's, uh, that's a young rookie mistake uh, for, for a freshman, right? So number 12, Layton, uh, comes in and dips the shoulder instead of wrapping up the tackle. He dips the shoulder, and he misses with the shoulder instead of wrapping up the tackle him to make the sure stop. Well, for Watterson, this is uh, some of the most 
positive offense that they've had here in the last couple of series. Yeah, they're getting some great production. I think they're really mixing it up, um, trying to create some mismatches and also stretch the defense to keep them honest. Back in the child the shotgun. Hands it off to Mercer. Mercer wants to bounce to the outside, and he can. Anthony Murphy tracked him down from behind, and coming up to help finish it off was Denim Cook. Yeah, there's Anthony the Bulldog Murphy. He's out there on the yard. He's the big dog on the yard, so nobody does anything without his permission. And you try to bounce it outside, he'll snatch you up and say, no, sir, you get back here. I got you. This is my yard. I run this defense. Exactly and he's a big 6'3 right. kid with long arms. I mean, that's, that's exactly, that's a, that's a dream come true for, uh, for a defensive coach. Second down, 15. Back in it again. There's some pressure coming, but he throws down the middle, and that ball is caught. What a catch brought in at the 15-yard line. That's Tommy Haley. They've been trying to hit him all night, and they finally get him with a long pass. Yep, and that goes back to the first uh, first play out of this turnover. We said, hey, let, let them stretch the field, and they went back to it again, stretched the field. Lots of pressure on the quarterback coming back. He sets and throws, and it was just misjudged by number 12. Instead of running through the ball, he tries to go up and get it at the highest point and misses. So now Watterson, they are threatening. Down by 10 in this game with plenty of game to play. Well, Watterson has a big mismatch up top. They have three guys going against two. And That's always a throw mismatch. It. There's Trout, makes the catch inside the 20-yard line, and he is dumped as he gets inside the 15. Oh, Bob, I bet the offense coordinator for, for Watterson was just screaming, snap the ball, snap the ball. When you have three wide receivers at the top and you only have two defensive backs out there, and uh, you gave Hartley time to get back and, and realize that they had a mismatch. Second down play. Coming up, Brzezinski goes out wide to the right. Barber over there to match up against him. That has been the matchup throughout the night. Handed off to Mercer, sidesteps the first tackler and gets to the outside. As he turned it upfield, where does he step out of bounds is the question. Oh, what a great play. People don't realize how tough that play is as a running back. You got a defensive end crashing down at you, getting ready to make contact, and you have to hit the brakes and just kind of freeze in midair and go around the side and he pushes off two other tacklers. Rory Ralston able to make the tackle. Forcing him out of bounds. Third down, third down and three. Mackinich with time. That time is running out. So he slings it to Mercer who gets a hit inside the five yard line. Yeah, and it, it almost looks like a, the quarterback got transformed that uh, some NFL quarterback from Kansas City came in and said, hey, let me sling this sidearm real quick just around people and make the ball bend. Exactly what he did. Just dropped it down sidearm, got it out there. So here we go, first down and goal from the five-yard line. This is where you look at Ryan Rudzinski with the height that he has, see if they don't try to loft him one maybe in the corner of the end zone at some point here. They're going to give Mercer a chance. And Mercer cuts up the middle. He gets hit. He's still on his feet. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Trayton Mercer with a rushing TD. And Watterson's right back in this. They're an extra point away from being down three. Yeah, and I think uh, Watterson has definitely found the soft spot for uh, this game. They made great adjustments. Instead of running off tackle to the outside, they're keeping it in between the tackles. And that's where Hartley is uh, accelerating is that outside speed. So now they're saying, let's do the quick hitters on the inside and see what we can get, and it's working. Rudy Kessinger attempting the extra point. Not a great snap, but a good job by the holder to get it down, and then the extra point is good. So really, give a lot of credit there to Christopher Bear for getting the ball down. 2.43 to go, third quarter, 13 to 10. Hartley has the lead over Bishop Watterson. This is Bishop Hartley football. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? 
to better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Thirteen to ten, Hartley has the lead. Watterson able to come up with a touchdown, their first of the game. And Kessinger with a long kick, and the Hawks will let that one go through the end zone for the touchback. Yeah, special teams is, is what it comes down to. Everybody sees the touchdown, but they don't go all the way back to how they got there. It all came from second half opening up, kicking off the ball, and Hartley bobbles it at the goal line instead of letting it go through. And now you get the ball at the 10-yard line, and you're in a, in a dog fight trying to get off your own uh, goal post. And you punt it short, give them a short field, and they drive and they drive. And they score. So special teams is so important in this game. Well, right now is where the Hawks need to have one of those patented Long drives that just eats clock. Yeah, so we're going to see if they go back to their bread and butter. They had it going there for a while, came up an inch short for a first down. Fake the handoff to Deontay Hubbard, and they bring the end around, and Brzezinski chases down Bryson Winbush and spins him out of bounds. All of that for no gain. Yeah, so Baby Vulture comes all the way from the free safety position and just flies up on the play and makes a really good play. Very athletic kid. And he says, hey, look, my toes are on the uh, out-of-bounds line. Put my hands up. We'll fight again when we get inbounds. Well, that drive and that touchdown by Watterson really changed the atmosphere in this place right now. Yeah, deflated it somewhat, so hopefully Hartley can uh, bounce back because that's what this is. It's all body blows, and Watterson gave a body blow, knocked the wind out of Hartley, and let's see how they react. Second down, 10. Underwood scrambling, and he throws on the run incomplete. Again, the intended receiver was Winbush. Yeah, and that's a tough pass for Underwood to, uh, to roll like that. So I really think uh, as a quarterback, he needs to get a better look. Let him drop back a little bit and stretch that defense. We're going out, out, out. I would like to see him go deep a couple times. Third down and 10. Huge play coming up right here for the Hawks. Looking to convert. Underwood again rolling left. And he throws. And that's an incomplete pass as well. Well, you just talked about it. Throwing across your body like that. It's not easy to do. And he couldn't find the receiver that time either. Emoja was the man it was intended for. Yeah, and two back-to-back -back passes by Hartley. That is outside of their norm. Uh, and that's that's the, the pattern here is let's let's get the ball running. And let's pick up some yards and see how we can grind it out, right? So now you're looking at third and 10 or fourth and 10 punting the ball because you passed it twice and you stopped the clock. And again, the punting tonight has been less than spectacular. Absolutely. So special teams are really going to play a role here. And this one, again, it's going to be taken. Uh, no, he didn't take it on the fair catch. He should have because it rolls back inside Watterson territory to the 45-yard line. They could have had it at the 44-yard line of the Hawks. Yeah, he could have saved himself another 12 to 14 yards, but he let the ball hit. I think maybe he lost it in the lights. Maybe. He didn't want to take the chance of bobbling it. Now, those are the kind of things that when they happen, you have to take advantage of as a defense. Absolutely, absolutely. So now Hartley's defense has to uh, bone up here and uh, really start getting after it, and they're doing a good job uh, when Vultures sp uh, uh, split out. And so he's down here at the bottom, so they'll bracket him up really nice. But it's everybody else that you have to worry about. That's right. Mackinich is uh, finding his groove as the quarterback, and Trayton Mercer just rushed for a touchdown. He's lined up to the right of the quarterback. They fake it to him. Mackinich to throw, and he does. And he finally hits his tight end, but his tight end gets hit and dropped to the turf. That's a great job by Robert Laketon right there as uh, Malagreca, the big tight end, made the reception. So that time Robert came through with uh, – and first let's watch this uh, – the replay where we get uh, Murphs coming in with the with the heat. But Robert comes through. This time he says, I'm going to make the shoulder tackle. I'm going to make sure the guy hits the ground. And he did. And I think they had that conversation on the sideline with the young man earlier. So all these in-game adjustments that happens. Gain of one on the play. They're going to pitch it to the man on the end around Brandon Trout. And he's got running room. He tries to spin. He is at the first down marker. And he'll lean forward to make sure that he gets the first down. So Trout, who's been pretty quiet tonight, comes up with a big play right there. Donovan Tucker on the tackle. That's a great call by Watterson because uh, you know your Hartley defense is uh, pinning the ears back coming. And so you really slow down and let them over-pursue 
and you just go around the edge, and now you got a first down ready to uh, start all over again. Good job by Tucker to hold on through that spin move and make the tackle prevent any further damage there. Mackinich, he's going to throw down the far sideline. This ball is incomplete. And that had a chance to be picked, no doubt about it, as uh, the man tracking it for the Hartley Hawks was Raylo Hogan. Yeah, that's just great football all the way around. So good pass rush. Quarterback stood in there, threw the ball up. Good ball. Gave you a wide receiver an opportunity. Defensive back turns his back towards the sideline because he knows that's the out of bounds. So that's another defender. And now he can track the ball with his eyes better. Uh, most of the time, kids will panic and not track the ball and track the receiver. That's a lot of good coaching all the way around on both teams. Second down, 10. Handed off, Mercer. And he gets through the initial contact, and he'll get to the 40-yard line. That'll leave him about five yards short of the first down. They've definitely found a soft spot with Hartley there, so they're getting a lot of window dressing with the uh, motions and uh, misdirections, but basically just off-tackle play and let kids over-pursue and get out of position. Third down five. Maxwell will call it six. Nose of the football sits at the 40-yard line. So Hartley definitely needs to get out of the incomplete or, or a sack here to keep him out of four-down territory, or else uh, Watterson will go for it. And the pressure coming in. The throw, the ball is tipped and incomplete. Great job of coverage once again, and it's the young Robert Lathan making the play. Yeah, so it looks like Watterson has found a weakness on the DBs. They're like, well, let's exploit it. So they're going after Layton, and they're saying he's a, he's a freshman, so let's go after him. Let's see what he has. But the young man is stepping up, and uh, Joey Wooten almost came there off the tip to get the interception. And here we go, four down territory. Yeah, and the Watterson's feeling pretty good about it here. So with 25 seconds left in the third quarter, they're going to go for it. Fourth down and six. Mackinich has two receivers to his right, fakes the handoff to Mercer, throws the ball, and it is incomplete over the head of the tight end, Malagreca. Whoo, what a lot of pressures coming in the middle. Uh, you know, these kids are playing all out, but you see that defensive tackle is just putting some pressure on him, letting the quarterback throw off of his back foot. And that that's, that's great judgment by the quarterback because you don't want to uh, eat that on fourth down. No, you don't want to eat that at all. And I'll tell you, there was, uh, looked like there might have been a man open on the sideline, and they didn't go that way. They came down the middle. So Underwood again, handing it off, but there is a flag prior to the start of the play, and that's going to back the Hawks up five yards. And like I said before in the, the beginning of the broadcast, it's all of these uh, five-yard low penalties. But let's take a look at this fourth down stop again. Look at this pressure coming in right there by uh, Murph. And you're getting right in front of it, and then here's the young man, Layton, just going up. Yeah, he threw that ball too high for uh, the guy that's a pretty big boy, <laughs> quite frankly. Malagrek is 6'2". Couldn't get up there and get it. Yeah, I don't know if he would have got it at 6'5". Well, we get another whistle here. There's a uh, conversation between the officials and the Hartley sideline. First down of 15 here. Hartley offense has gotten only one touchdown tonight. The defense took care of the other. Here's Deontay Hubbard. And again, nothing there. Tried to go off the left side, and he gets a pickup of one. And there's Cole Rett getting up again. If you're going to run at Cole Rett, you better uh, bring a lot. You got to bring an awful lot. There's a lot of good kids on uh, both sides of the ball here, and they're just going at it. And this is exactly where we thought we would be heading into the fourth quarter, where it's a 50-50 anybody's game. That ends the third quarter, 13-10. to The Bishop Hartley Hawks have the lead. They also have the football. And we'll be back for the start of the fourth quarter. You're watching Bishop Hartley Hawks football.
Well, this game is being produced by Yamo Media. Yamo Media specializes in live production, content creation, and podcast production. If you have an idea for a podcast and you'd like to take it to the next level or have an event you need streamed for the world to see, visit yamomedia.com. Also, check out their original shows. That's debatable on thir- on Tuesdays at 8 o'clock. Ohio Football Weekly with Marty Bannister every Wednesday at 6.30. And this Sunday is the Coach Howard College Preseason Special. He'll be joined by Ohio State Coach Chris Holtman, Sean Miller from Xavier, Wes Miller from the University of Cincinnati, and Shaka Smart, head coach of Marquette. The show starts at 6 o'clock on Yumbo Media Columbus YouTube and the Facebook pages. And what a big play there for the Hartley Hawks. They had to convert. They had to get a first down. And Randall, they just did. Oh, I'm telling you. So you're thinking, okay, here you have speed that might get you there. But this is the key right here. This is the off-season workout program. Speed, little guy, keeps powering through it. Look at him. Little guy. Just getting a little jackrabbit. He is going, and then the rest of the force comes to come save him. Yeah. Ben Birchfield comes in there, and he got that hit, and that uh, propelled him forward. First down to 10. Going to hand it off, and again, Hubbard, well, this time he bounced. He got hit, he bounced to the right, and he still winds up with nothing on this. Yeah, he jumps in there, and it's like he hits a wall, then he bounces out, then he cuts to the right, then he, there's a, a body laying there. He has to hurdle over that, and then he has to go in there. And, you know, if, if the U.S. Army's out there, this is exactly what you <laughs> want to see from U.S. Army kids, right? Yeah, he was running the obstacle course for sure right there. Absolutely. Picked up a yard, second down and nine. Now, the key is here. You know, you don't want to keep going with those third and long situations where you have to convert. And there he hits that wall. He hits there that he bounces wall. off. Yeah, and it's scary anytime you leave your feet like that. Underwood. Fakes the handoff, throws it over the middle. It's picked off. Purcell's got it. And back on the... Uh, Return, he comes inside the 30, the 20, the 10, and he cuts to the middle, and that's a touchdown. Dominic Purcell with a pick six, and Watterson retakes the lead. Yeah, that's exactly what happens, uh, and that's been a setup. Uh, Watterson's been watching that because that's the only play Hartley's been doing as far as passing it, the little short, quick plays. You have to stretch the defense. The kid has an arm. Let the wide receivers run, stretch the defense, keep them honest. And he's sitting right over there in the middle. He went to Wooten. And you got offensive linemen chasing at that time, and it's just too late. That was a um, I mean, that was a dangerous pass to begin with because Purcell wasn't the only guy there. No. There were a couple of guys there. Yeah, when you're not stretching the, the, the perimeter and going deep and keeping that defense stretched and honest, they all start packing in because they're packing in for the run. Extra point attempt here by Kessinger, and that is good. And Bishop Watterson back on top. Dominic Purcell with the return of an interception for a touchdown. And it's a 17-13 game with 10-16 remaining in the fourth quarter. Yeah, two pick sixes in the game. That's this tight. Special teams playing a big role in it. Uh, Missed extra point by Hartley. Now it's a two-possession game. This is how it goes. It is indeed how it goes. We'll take a look at it again. There's number six, Dominic Purcell. Watch him jump up and he gets that football, and then there he goes. Yeah, those perimeter receivers have seen zero action all night long, so they're just packing it in and packing it in, and that's what happens when you try to throw those quick slants. So you have to start going out to your perimeter game, throw some fades, throw some post routes, and you have a quarterback that has enough arm to do that. It's not like he doesn't have the arm. Uh, I don't know why they're babysitting that arm and not unleashing it. Now he's going to get a chance to get back on the field here in a moment. As that ball is going to bounce into the end zone for the touchback. Well, and you mentioned that, and, you know, Peyton Underwood does have a good arm. And if you go back just a season ago, he had some great weapons. Trayvon Saunders was the best. Uh, for two years, all you had to do was throw the ball in the area code, and he was going to find a way to go get it, right? Right. Uh, so you're right. We haven't seen that tonight. We've seen the short, conservative-type passes. He's been good at it up until that last one, of course. But um, as you said, when a defense sees the same, 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 they're going to react to it. Yep, and they're, they're packing it in. And, and you know, we're just, uh, we're just the commentators up in the box, and, and we're seeing it. So, you know, somebody needs to tell the coaches up at the top, too. 
Well, they go with uh, kind of a tight formation and bring the man in motion. Pitch it to the near side. And once again, getting some good positive yardage there is Bryson Winbush. Yeah, now they're going back to their bread and butter, which is good. So you're not panicking. Uh, so now you're going to the, let's go with the, with the speed sweep on the outside and just uh, see if we can get some people going and get a nice little block there and pick up some positive yards. Brian Rudzinski came over and made the tackle again. He's all over the field. I'm telling you, that baby vulture is an athlete. Yep. No doubt. Three receivers set here for Hartley. Inside handoff to Deontay Hubbard. And Hubbard tries to keep moving, but he is wrapped up, and he's brought down. And that's just a good, hard tackle. Tyler Liu, senior linebacker there. And this is another key, too, Randall, to be honest with you. Look, here's Deontay Hubbard again. He's not getting a lot in the big runs category right now. He's, he's having to fight like this on every run. Yeah, and he's fighting and clawing for every yard that he can get every inch. And he did a good job just lowering the boom, but the linebacker stuck with him and hung on and spun him down. Another huge play right here, third down and four. You're in your own territory. Find yourself down by four points. Got to get a touchdown. Pitch it back to Hubbard. He tries to get to the edge, and he's pushed out of bounds. And where will they mark this? Right at around the 30-yard line? Yeah, you're about a yard shy, yard and a half. And you're going to be pretty much forced to go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, you're forced to go for it on fourth down with nine minutes left because uh, uh, you can't uh, afford to punt it. You know, 20 yards is what they're averaging on punts. Yes. So you turn the ball over at the 50 if they don't return it. So they line it up in the triple I. And they get the defense to jump. My goodness. You know, Watterson has had untimely penalties tonight. And we'll see how that one plays out if it comes back to haunt them. So these little five-yard penalties that we've been talking about since the first quarter, they're adding up, making a difference because they come at critical times. Uh, and this is just a hard bark by the quarterback going off that sound. Hartley uh, held their water on offense and let the defense move. And that was a big man, Cole Rett. He's the one that jumped. And, you know, of course, he's out there saying, look, I cannot let them get this yard and a half. And so they caught him yeah. with that anticipation. And Hartley's got to open it up here. So if I'm Hartley first and 10, I run uh, all, all fly routes and stretch that defense. Just let them know you got a little bit of speed coming at them. Well, instead, they're going to give it to Deontay Hubbard. And again, nothing there for him. Cole Rett, after that offsides play, he just jumps right in there and he makes the tackle. Yep. So everything's packed in, packed in. They know what's coming. Uh, you know, that first down was a time when you can just kind of open it up because even if you throw incomplete, you're second and 10. Now you're at second and 9.8. Yes, <laughs> you are. Underwood calls into the backfield. Winbush. And they will hand it to him. Trying to go turn the corner on the outside. And by the time he does, there's nothing there. Yeah, you got the vulture that, that kind of tracked him down out there again. And uh, it's hard to make plays on the outside. Well, again, a couple of weeks ago when uh, Watterson took on DeSales, this is what they tried to do all night, DeSales. They tried to get to the outside, and this is what the Watterson defense did to them. They shut it down. Yep. And now, again, you're looking at two downs here. I know that. But it's third down and eight, and your back's against the wall. Empty backfield. Underwood throws to the near side, and, or the far side there, and, the hit is made immediately. There's nowhere to go for Charlie Bernardes. No, and Hartley hasn't thrown the ball over eight yards. The ball has not been in the air over eight yards for any, any uh, extended time. Uh, they really have to start stretching the ball. You went empty backfield, uh, empty set, uh, running back ran out. And so I'm thinking that they're going to go all verticals. And each one of those guys did a stop route. Two-yard stop. So they're going to punt it away and have faith in the defense with seven and a half minutes to go. Here's the best punt of the night for the Hawks. And see if they get a roll here. They will. And a roll inside the 20-yard line and be downed at the 19. 7.22 is what's left on that clock. And that Hartley defense is going to be leaned on. You know, you go back to that last play. The one thing they did, they lined up uh, Terry and Barber on the left side, the wide side of the field. And I thought... Maybe something different. Big man. They haven't. Uh, they haven't looked at. Really, who have they thrown a pass to tonight? 
uh, besides Bryson Winbush. Right, right. And so if, if, if I'm Hartley, I would have my slot receiver, put Terry in the slot, have him run right at the vulture at safety. That makes him backpedal immediately. And then you can run your underneath crossing routes. And you totally take him out of the uh, defensive scheme if you do that. Now what has to happen right now is his defense has to step up, and they've done that tonight. Hawks are down by four. Watterson. Going to run the football. Mercer. Anthony Murphy had him tracked, and it's going to be a short gain here. Yeah, Mur Murph did a good job turning everything back inside. Uh, so he sheds his block and really makes sure that the running back turns back inside, and there's a lot of blue jerseys coming in and uh, cleaning up after him. And right there, he's attacking the inside shoulder, and you got Rory coming in to clean up, and a couple defensive linemen, uh, 77's in there. Uh, Isaac Zadu, no uh, surprise there. Isaac is in on a lot of stuff. Barber has to come hustling to the near side of the field so that he can cover Rudzinski. And they pitch it over to Mercer, and he cannot get through. Nice job in making the tackle there, Brandon Lorette. Makes that stop. It's a gain of only about one. Gain of one. Brandon did a good job this time uh, maintaining his ground. Uh, when they go on that quick little uh, sweep to the outside, forcing him to cut inside was the uh, linebackers. And we're right there. Brandon made him play. Another huge play right here because if you can force an incomplete pass or if you can stop him short gain here, you're going to force him to punt the ball back to you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of this right here, Bob. When you have Rory coming off the field, uh, third down. Yeah, I noticed that too. And Rory standing on the sideline. I'm not a fan of, of my top player being off on the sideline watching. Well, they're going to hand it off. And uh, they're going to get to about the 25-yard line. So the Hawks do stop them. And they will force them to punt. So as it turns out, well, they gave up the ball with uh, 722 left in the quarter. And they're going to get it back here. And that's, Don, that's big Donovan Davis down there at the bottom uh, rolling. Uh, no, that's, uh, who is that, 78? I do believe. Rolling down there at the bottom. Was it Donovan 76? Or Lorette was in there, too. Lorette was in there, too. Yeah. Joey Wooten, he's going to let this ball bounce. And, boy, does that take a Watterson roll. Down to the 20-yard line. So the Hawks will find themselves 80 yards away from pay dirt here, down by four. Yeah, and it's it's one of those where first down out the gate, uh, you have to run the ball right at the vulture. Have have a wide receiver, even if you're just faking it. Have a wide receiver go right at him, create that window dressing, make him conscientious about where because right now he's just running downhill. Everybody's packed in. You're doing those little dink passes. Uh, nobody's uh, threatened by that at all. And they're actually asking for the dink pass for another pick six. Rodzinski, he's standing at the 30-yard line. The ball is back at the 20. They're going to hand it off and try to come off the left side. And there is just no room there. Yeah, there's there's no room right there. And uh, let's see if he gets up. There we go. So he's still trying to give these body blows and body blows. And you got one yard on it, which is fine. But at some point in time, you have to stretch this defense. Down to 4.45 remaining. And again, you've got to stretch the defense, and you need to get a touchdown. A field goal won't do it for you here. Underwood hands it off, and it's a quick tackle in the backfield. Yeah, and they're, they're almost daring Hartley to throw the ball. Uh, so there's, you know, they, they know that they're going to run the ball and they're daring them to throw the ball with, with this quarterback that they have in shotgun. And there's just too much penetration um, for them before they can even get out of their stands. Right. Now you're looking at third down and 13. And you need a big play. Barber goes out wide to the right. Underwood is going to roll that way, and he throws, and it's tipped, and it's incomplete. And again, they were trying to go underneath. That pass, if the ball's caught, it's going to be caught at the 20-yard line, and that's going to get you right back to the original line of scrimmage. You still have to go 10 yards. Well, and the thing about it is it's not like you don't have uh, wide receivers that can run. Mm -hmm. 
So you can definitely stretch the defense. Uh, I don't know why they're not unleashing them. So they're going to punt it away again. And, and again, lean on the defense. Good snap. Good kick. Really good kick, actually. Oh, wow. And this one takes a Watterson bounce, and it'll be down to the 46. And that's where the Eagles will get it with three minutes and 40 seconds left well, in the fourth quarter. And his leg is starting to warm up. That's the second yeah. uh, second punt. Really good. Last well, two. It, it, right. And, again, in, in all fairness, uh, you know, Colin Callahan is a field goal kicker. He hasn't been the punter. He just took over the job, so I guess we should – let him have a little bit of a learning curve here. But you're right. They did much more comfortable that time. Good snap, which hasn't been the case always for him tonight. He's been battling that. Oh, he had a kick deep in his own territory. His first punt tonight, he was standing on the goal line. Uh, you talk about a high-pressure situation. He's been in it. Yeah, he's getting better and better as he's going, so that's good. There we go. First down at 10 for Watterson. Handed off Mercer. Trying to go to the outside. He can't do it, and I'll tell you why. Donovan Davis, Isaac Asadu, that's why. Yeah, that's the combination on the inside that I really like. That's the, the pit bull and the Rottweiler. So we've got Davis, the junkyard dog in there, and, and Isaac just cleaning it all up. There you see it right here, the penetration. And it's over at that point. Loss of two. Second down and 12. Watterson will take all the time they can coming back up to the line of scrimmage. Every second counts here. Mackinich. Taking the snap, faking the handoff. Now he throws. Far side. Caught by Brandon Trout. And he's out of bounds at the 42-yard line. That's first down. Now here he is showing up late in the fourth quarter. Brandon Trout. Yeah, and you're only one, re one reception away from being a hero like that. So Harley gave him way too much room on the sideline over there. And you can see the separation. He has about eight yards separation, which you can't do. They went out of bounds, so the, the uh, clock has stopped here. 2.55 left to play. Hacknich hands it off. Mercer caught in the backfield and ridden down. Anthony Murphy, great job to get in there. We get a late flag. So you got the Bulldog over there. I think they're going to get him with a horse collar. Personal foul against Hartley. That'll be 15 yards. 15 yards in a first down. And if you want to have any chance in this game, you've got to hold them to a field goal only. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And if, I'm wondering if you're Watterson, if this is four down territory uh, for them. Because either way you go, it's, it's uh, running down the clock. Now that clock becoming the enemy of the Hartley Hawks. Rodzinski is back as the quarterback. And spread it out. And this is dangerous. Get him to run that wildcat a little bit. And he brings Purcell back in the backfield with him. Again, they take their time. Ball is snap. Purcell takes it. Room up the middle, and he's brought down inside of 30. And what is... Uh, Well, they're saying he was down. Yeah, okay. Dominic Purcell picks up a couple of yards. So let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this replay, see what's actually happening. On that last fumble that they said uh, the running back was down. He cuts through there, and he's weaving. And he's going down. Oh, the ball's out before his knees hit the ground. And there's Rodzinski. Fakes the hand off, and he gets taken down. Now with a minute 28 left, Hartley's going to have to start taking timeouts. That's yes, those little things right there. You're talking about two or three inches that his leg was uh, going to touch the ground, and Hartley could have had the ball back. Well, for Bishop Watterson, not only is this game huge to try to be the outright winner of the CCL, but uh, 
It's been a long time since Watterson has beaten Hartley. They're 29 and 14 all time against the Hawks, but Bishop, Hart Bishop Hartley's won all 11 of the meetings since they started to play every year again since back in 2012. So in 10 years, Hartley's won 11 times. Yep. And, and Waters has been licking their chops oh, for this one. Yeah. Yes, they have. And they're a minute and 28 seconds away from getting it here, so they feel. We'll see if they are. Or if the Hawks have something that they can bring at them. Here's a pitch to Mercer. And Mercer is going to be caught and brought down. And he's brought down at the 25-yard line, and Hartley expends another timeout. That'll leave them with one. Now, I wonder if uh, the Watterson kicker has enough leg to, to get, the, get this there. I was watching him at, at halftime warming up, and he looked pretty good. Now they have him on the field. So they'll give him the chance. The ball's going to be snapped from, where is it, the 26-yard line? That'll be 43 yards. And again, the Hawks this close to getting the football back without any points possible as Dominic Purcell has that ball knocked out. You saw it was loose right there before he went down to the ground. Of course, no. there is no replay in high school football except ours. Yep, and that was Rory uh, coming in, punching it out, and it was inches away from the official said his, his knee was down. Rudy Kessinger. As I said, the ball is going to be kicked. From the 33, it's a 43-yard attempt. Oh, well, the Hawks just went off sides. Kick would have been good anyway, and it is good anyway. And I don't know, do they take the five yards and kick it again? or Leave the points on the board. Yeah, I would say so, right? Yeah, I'll leave the points on the board. Yeah. Well, there's no indication from the referee yet. He looked at the, the uh, Watterson sideline. And. Oh. oh, they're huddling up. Yeah. Yes, oh, they are. They're going for it. They are going to go for it. Did they even move the they yard didn't move marker? the yard marker. They didn't, use, they didn't move it yet. Now they moved the football. The football's down to the 20-yard line. Well, you would think Mercer's going to get this football. Needs to get two yards. Minute 17 is what's left here. And Bob, it looks like they're adjusting the clock, too. Yeah, 121 is what they want on the clock. So it's fourth down play coming up here. Again, Mercer is very deep in the backfield. He's back at about the 30-yard line. He's got to get to the 20 for a first down. Mackinich takes his time and looking it over here. Yeah, and they're trying to draw Hartley yeah, offside. They are. And now timeout will be called by Bishop Watterson. They're going to kick the football anyway. Well, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't just keep the points on the board. And uh, I figured they thought that they could get a, a offside here. And yeah. Now you risk on getting the, extra, uh, the field goal blocked. Well, I guess the reasoning would be you're taking the gamble. If you can pull them offside, you get the first down, and then you can run out the clock, right? Yep. But, as you said, you know, the fact of the matter is, I guess, that if you get those three points or you don't, it's still going to take a touchdown for Bishop Hartley to, to win this game. So, take the chances on that, I suppose. Right. But really, when Hartley gets the ball back, no matter what happens right here, <laughs> That's not a lot of time for an offense that has tried to grind it out all night and not stretch the field. Yeah. yeah it's uh, They're not going to be able to do that. They're going to have to stretch the field. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're talking straight verticals and 
And here we go. Oh, they're going they are going to go for it. All right. They're going to go for it again. They call it back out. Yeah, Mercer is much tighter formation here. They're not going to give it to him. They're going to throw it. McInish throws, and that's incomplete, and it's a turnover on downs. See, and that's the scary part because you see uh, Barber right there almost had a pick six. He got his hands on it, and he just couldn't hold on because he would have been in the end zone right now on, on the 86-yard return. Mercer, 44, the intended receiver. And he just, oh. All right, let's see what Hartley does. They've got one timeout, and they've got a minute and 17 seconds. And they need to get a touchdown. And don't forget, number 10 is a, a, an elite track athlete, made it to the districts uh, in hurdles. So he's got some speed out there. Peyton Underwood, senior quarterback, playing his final game here on this field and the throws to the far sideline. It's incomplete, and he tried to get it into the hands of Terry and Barber. Well, once again, you're running a, a, a bunch of outs when uh, Watterson's just squatting at five and waiting for you to run your out. And there it was. A little bit high. Minute 14 left. Well, they're bringing it in in a tight formation here. Pressure. And Underwood has to throw it right into the ground. Boy, just nothing. Nothing in this offense. There's no energy whatsoever. Luke Reidlinger is the guy that busted in there and put the pressure on Peyton Underwood. There's a huddle here about whether or not it's intentional grounding. Is yeah, you've got to huddle up. Yeah, and you've got, uh, I think you had two receivers out there, and he was outside the box. So a long conversation about this. Watterson 8-1 and one coming into this game, trying to cap off their season with a huge win and with a CCL title. Bishop Hartley 4-5 and five coming in, trying to finish at the 500 mark. Intentional grounding will be called. That'll be a loss of down. And that'll make it even worse. And we'll look at this and how quickly Peyton unloads the football here with Riedlinger coming in on him, and, yeah, he just spikes it. You don't even see another blue jersey in the picture. Yeah, I don't think it went past the line of scrimmage. Well, you got third and... Third and forever. Yes, indeed. Underwood all the way back at his own goal line, and they snapped the ball to the running back. And that goes nowhere. Yeah, and I think it was just a miscue there. <laughs> it's supposed to go to the quarterback, and it goes to the running back by accident. And the quarterback's looking like, uh-oh, what are we doing now? So it's fourth down play. They've got to get all the way to the 32-yard line just to get a first down. Underwood taking the snap. And he throws down the near sideline, not even close. So that's going to be batted down, incomplete. And the Bishop Watterson Eagles are going to do what they haven't done in 10 years. They're going to get a win against Bishop Hartley tonight. And they're going to take the CCL title right back across town absolutely and for those people who probably didn't wonder who maybe are wondering does the quarterback have a, a arm to get the ball out there clearly he does i mean that was a beautiful spiral but when the defense is sitting back anticipating it fourth and forever i think it, it becomes pretty apparent where they're going to go but those are the plays that you need to do first quarter second quarter third quarter just mix a couple in there to keep them honest keep that safety back and that opens up your running game and it opens up the inside a little bit, too. And that's what prevents that pick six from happening when everybody's punched in there together. Ryan Rudzinski has played quarterback. He's played receiver. He's played defensive back extremely well in this game. McInnich takes a snap, and he kneels down. And he's punted the ball. Oh, yes, and he has punted the ball. You're right. Cannot forget that. He has done it all tonight. Andy ran back a kick return for 70 yards. <laughs> 
Bishop Watterson. They come from behind and they get the win tonight here at Bishop Hartley. 17 to 13, the final score. The Watterson Eagles, champions of the CCL, as they get set to start the playoffs next week. Hartley Hawks will be in those playoffs as well starting next week, but they're not feeling good about it right now. It's a game that they had, they were controlling for the most part, and then it got away from them in the second half, and they just didn't have the offensive punch to really mount any kind of a charge in the second half of this game. Randall, we just talked about it the entire time. It's the most disappointing thing is that they just kept going back to the same old thing over and over, and Watterson never never went off of it. They kept on making the plays all night. Yeah, they didn't force Watterson to adjust uh, the least bit uh, with some of the play calling on offense. So, And the adjustment, is, it doesn't have to be big things. It's, it's, it's slight little things. Uh, Hartley was uh, down uh, third and forever uh, second quarter, and they ran some, uh, some flood routes with multiple receivers, got a first down. So it's stuff like that that you got to continue to do, and you can't just keep running the dink passes. So I think Hartley will learn from that, grow from that, go into the playoffs with a little bit more uh, in their toolbox and get better. But hats off to this uh, uh, Watterson team that said, hey, after 10 years of, of uh, losing the battle across town, we're going to come in and snatch it away from you. And they were close, uh, close at halftime from losing it, but they came back and they made the adjustments. Yes, they did. They did make the adjustments here tonight. And uh, they found a way to win. That's really what it came down to. You even talked about it at the end. They took points off the board to try to win it a little bit earlier, but their defense went out and was able to make the stop one more time. And there you get a look at Brian Kennedy and his Bishop Watterson Eagles team and Cole Rett, big number 76. He was a huge part of this game. You want to talk about stopping the running game of the Bishop Hartley Hawks, you need to have a guy like that. And he was busy all night long. Yeah, and hats off to their defense uh, defense coordinator over there called a good game. But also hats off to the Hartley defense. And this is what it was. It was it was two defensives just grinding it out against each other. And we said it's going to come down to special teams at the end. And the little things. So you had a pick six by Hartley in the first half, put them up ahead, and probably would have won the game. But then the pick six at the back end, to nod it back up again and, and put Waterston ahead. And there wasn't enough left for Hartley to do it. So hats off to them for playing a great game and uh, coming here and snatching a victory away and getting themselves ready for the playoffs as well. That's right. So both teams, as we said, are going to the playoffs. Uh, one of them feeling great about it tonight. The other one not feeling so great, but they're going to get back to work starting tomorrow, and they'll feel better as they build toward the first playoff game next week. The other disappointing thing about it for the Hawks is they had only the two home games this year. They got a big win here last week, and uh, here on Seniors Night, uh, they weren't able to come away with it. To, but as you said, not that they didn't come away with it. This team came in here and snatched it. Yeah, this team came in here and snatched it. Uh, Hartley had the chance. They had a great opportunity to get after it, uh, in my opinion. But we also saw some young guys at Hartley ended up growing tonight. And uh, I'm really interested to see what happens with this playoffs now. Everything's uh, reset at 0-0. And uh, Hartley's going to be a wounded dog coming into the playoffs, and that's the worst that you want to see. You don't want to be that team to see that wounded dog that has nothing to lose coming out there playing loose and uh, ready to go. And Watterson, I think, is going to make a big push at it this year uh, in the playoffs. So I think they got a really good squad there. And uh, they have a receiver out there that, that's going to get on fire again. Uh, Hartley did a good job bracketing the receivers uh, today. And then they just open up their running game on the inside. So uh, they have multiple weapons. So I want to see how far they can push in the playoffs as well. Tell you what, when the league play is over and you go into the playoffs, as long as you're not facing one another, you can kind of pull for the league when That's the right. playoffs start, right? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Everybody's always watching scores the next uh, the next morning uh, to see who in the league has made it for, uh, forward. And uh, when you're on the bus, you listen to scores, and you want to, you know, hopefully, hoping that uh, your league teammates uh, have made it through as well. That's right. There is a sense of pride, and a sense of pride in these games, a sense of, point, of disappointment for the Hartley Hawks. But uh, as we said, they'll gear it up, and they'll be ready for their first playoff game next week. Randall, good to see you again, my friend. It was great working with you tonight. Hey, Bob, it's always good to be with you, man. And, uh, you know, this is our, our one time in the fall. Uh, hopefully next fall will be a little bit more. But when you have two home games, man, I mean, jeez. What can you do? <laughs> That's right. Do the best we can. That's right. Do the best. All right. For Randall Sampson and Will Ward, I'm Bob McElligot saying good night. Bishop Watterson, they win the CCL this year. They're heading to the playoffs, and they're doing so with a 9-1 record. The Hartley Hawks are headed to the playoffs as well. They're going to go in 4-6, and six, but they're going to be a dangerous team to deal with based on the strength of schedule that they played 
this year. That's going to do it from Jack Ryan Field here at Bishop Hartley High School. Final score, Bishop Watterson 17 and the Hartley Hawks 13. You've been watching Bishop Hartley Football.